I wore a shirt that said undercover cop one time. And I no. thought the, the deal was at 54th <laughs> Avenue no way. and 66th Street. But I had an undercover cop shirt on. And the guy goes, you know, you have to tell me you're a cop, right? I said, man, it's just a joke shirt. I ain't no cop. And he sold me the eight ball of Coke and I left. This is 56, a Pinellas County Sheriff's Office podcast. I'm Murphy Butler with Laura Sullivan and Ashley Cooley. We have got a great show for you today. And we have some other things to accomplish today. Of course, since we started this journey, we're always about having conversations, learning, and having a good time while doing it. But we have to solve some internal squabbling uh, with this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not a coincidence that our last guest and today's guest uh, might have uh, some things we need to work out. So last episode, we chatted with Lieutenant Freddie Hayes, uh, who works out at the Pinellas County Jail, support lieutenant out there, uh, does a lot of stuff, involved in a lot of things. And one of the things he's got is the corrections response team or the Mm -hmm. CRT team, which we describe to folks generally as like a SWAT team that operates within the jail, sometimes off, off, uh, off campus when needed, but, but mostly within the jail. And Freddie said some things, uh, oh, did he, he ever? He, he did. Yeah. Uh, about the other tactical uh, unit in the in the sheriff's office, which is the SWAT team, also known as the CRT of the road. Or yes, the CRT of the road. So right he out, said right out the he gate. did Here say that. He did say that. Right out the gate. And he also <laughs> no, said no he also said among other things that the CRT team is the most utilized tactical unit in the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. So. Um, to rebut that, we're thrilled to have uh, Sergeant Brian Diebold of our Special Weapons and Tactics, or SWAT team. He is the SWAT supervisor uh, with us as our next guest on 56. And I'm looking forward to talking all about all that stuff. But I just I'm feeling a lot of personal satisfaction right now as well, <laughs> uh, because uh, two reasons. One is as we're developing the podcast, trying to nail down guests, we get feedback, of course, from our listeners, but members of the agency as well. And more than one person suggested that Brian would be a great guest because he has great stories and several people actually did. But every single one of those people said, yeah, but he's never going to come on the podcast. I actually <laughs> said I was never going to come. Yeah. And well, that too. <laughs> and yet, yet here, here, you are. here he is. So the power of persuasion that we have here is fantastic. So that makes me feel good. The other the, thing the, too, the podcast that gets things done. Yeah, we are the podcast yeah. that gets things done. The, the other piece is, um, so as you'll hear, Brian has been in a lot of different units in the agency. A lot of them you'd consider high risk, high liability, you know, some some what a normal person would consider kind of scary things that, mm-hmm. that go on. Crazy stuff. A- and, and Brian has said that he is not afraid of anything when it comes to law enforcement. It's his job, nothing, nothing. He doesn't lose sleep over. He's not worried about it, but he is terrified of this podcast. Yes. Which kind of makes you feel good, too, because if you can scare somebody like Brian Schlitz, Yes. You're doing something right. And we're just three innocent, curious, well-informed civilians. And we got the SWAT guy shaking over here. Yeah. yeah I got the bubble guts not knowing what's going to come out of the <laughs> Right. <laughs> exactly. So same. Same. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> True. so, okay. so, uh, um, so before we get into all that, Ashley has a question. She has, none of us know the answer. Uh, or the question. for right. all of us. Yeah, it's, hands are it's actually scary for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Ashley, it's your time. Ask the question. We'll answer it and get us started. Okay. Did you say Ashy? I know I said Ashley, <laughs> you said, you get, but it, it might have it might have run to you. I don't All know. Right. Um, so speaking of scary, or at least this is to me. So it's a would you rather situation. Hmm. Would you rather be trapped in an elevator for several hours up on like the fifteenth floor, or stuck on a roller coaster right at the crest just before it goes down for several hours? Which would you prefer and why? I, I'm totally comfortable with either, as long as I'm not upside down. On, on the, I, I'm going to pick the roller coaster because it's outside, it's fresh air, I can see some birds and things. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really like the climate control. And, the, and, and I might be uh, yeah, trapped oh. with unappealing people. Am I alone in the elevator? I want more details. That's a good question. I'm, I'm a green. Yeah. Do I have any rations yeah. on the elevator? No. Mm. Or is it too sunny? I might get sunburned on the roller you coaster. Might. Ooh, you might. That's true. How many so, hours? Several, so I'm gonna say oh. like four or five. Okay, so you don't have food. Yeah, I'm going with the roller coaster. I like I like heights. It's, it's more thrilling. You like heights? Oh, I love heights. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that surprised me. Hmm. That's you a got, lot going on there. Right? Yeah. I'm with you in a sense. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about the the sun as well. Mm-hmm. But in that elevator, I'm gonna go nuts. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna tear down walls. Also, we could conceivably escape from the roller coaster, right? We could yes. we could unstrap. We can climb out the and elevator. It's gonna it, it's be harder to get out. I think bigger at least. So I'm. Not as claustrophobic, but I would go f- nuts. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go roller coaster. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go elevator. Um, yeah, you would. Wow. Because, well, <laughs> it depends on, there's a, I'm overthinking it, of course, but if I'm on the, on the roller coaster, how are they going to get me down? They're mm-hmm. either going to release the brakes, we're going to continue the ride, mm-hmm. or I'm going to have to climb out of this thing 
dangling above however I am, you know, it, the, however high I am, the presumably the firefighters are going to come save me and I'm going to have to climb out on their ladder. I, I just, I'd probably die in that process. <laughs> They're going to carry you like a damsel in distress. You're no, going to be fine. Uh, no, no. I'm, I'd like to see that firefighter, but, um, but the elevator, so I. I, yes, <laughs> the elevator, I, I can't really see how high I am. It's, I'm just kind of sitting there and at the end of the day, they're going to lower me to one floor and drag me out the door. So With I think the power's I'm, out. You have no air. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I get it. I get it. I'm just, if it was okay, if it was the, I'll do the roller coaster. If mm -hmm. eventually they're going to get the brakes unjammed, we're just going to finish the ride. But if I got to unstrap myself and climb around, I'm, mm -mm, I can't do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. that's a good one. What How about, about you? you? Uh, I'd say roller coaster. Too, even though like I'm, I'm scared of roller coasters specifically drops. I hate mm -hmm. them, um, but with the elevator, I don't think I could handle like no airflow. I think that would just that would suck. That would drive me to the to the edge. Like I would be worried it would drop at any moment, even though I know like that probably wouldn't. As happen. as could the roller coaster. Oh yeah, exactly. After you've That's why I put it right there. And trying to get out, you know. I'd same. rather be outdoors, even though the sun wouldn't be yeah ideal. Yeah. But die, I, die with a good view if you have to go. Well, then mm. you got the airflow. Yes. Yeah, I need that. Need oxygen. Yeah, right. so yeah. that way I don't panic. Oxygen hopefully, is maybe. overrated. All right. Yeah, well. Sure. All right. Well, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. I like the. I the rather. I like the rather. I, that, that's good. I was worried you were going to like ask what my favorite scary movie was, and I honestly could not remember a single scary movie, so I was panicking. No, I, I was don't just gonna like say, scary yeah, what he movies. Said. No, no, no. <laughs> my beats per minute went down when you asked that one. Yeah. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay. Good. 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 I was going to ask about, like, since the Rolls Royce video mm -hmm. was doing its thing, like, what's the best <laughs> vehicle and why, but I was like, eh. That was a great video. That's that's not not that was fun. awesome. Yeah. But Ashley all day. That was yes. amazing. Good stuff. And Snooky, I mean, he's he's phenomenal. Snooky? What? Snooky. His That's nickname. his nickname. Really? I didn't know that. No, Why, yeah. yeah, really? Yeah, when he was on SWAT, he's a Jersey boy. He always, when he was a recruit, he used to dance all fa dress all fancy. I mean, it was, so he was Snooky oh, from Jersey Boys. No, not Jersey Boys. Jersey Shore. Yeah, Jersey, Shore. Jersey Shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jersey Shore. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, now my I know gosh. that. Snooky. Snooky. Okay. I, like I wish it. I knew that before, but man, am I going to make <laughs> use of that? Now we do. <laughs> now we do. Now we do. All right. So, Brian, um, been here since 1999. Yes. A lot of fun career stuff to talk about, but let's talk about how you ended up here. Where'd you grow up? Tell I me all about it. Born and raised in St. Pete. All right. Uh, went to Dixie, Holland's High. This is what it's called now, but yeah, I grew up in St. Pete. Uh, my dad and two brothers were St. Pete cops, so my whole life, pretty much, I wanted to be a cop. Revolved mm -hmm. around it. So what was that like growing up? I mean, you're, they were... They were um, they were undercover, right? They were, a couple were. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and it was while you were in school still, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> how was that? So my dad was mostly in narcotics and then criminal intel back then. I remember as a kid, my dad used to have like booking photos of all these prostitutes because back then it was vice and narcotics, which mm -hmm. did, you know, victimless crimes and then drugs as well. But he had all these polaroids of prostitutes like their booking photos me and my brother used to kind of just sit there and go through ball and play like <laughs> trading cards no, like, not trading cards. They, were, they were legit polaroids but it was like what's that show memory uh, where you gotta find uh -huh. the same one and we'd flip them all over and uh, try to find the then? same ones i don't know under 10 <laughs> somewhere around there <laughs> and it was awesome uh, but you oh, know between great. that and, and my dad my, one of my older brothers used to be undercover as well and they used to always have these different cars and my dad always drove a mustang every every couple of years he'd have a new mustang and i loved mustang so i just ever so since like, then you I'm, get prostitute trading cards yeah mm -hmm. cool cars you're in absolutely they're fast cars too so but, you say your family was all was all in law enforcement yes, when you were growing up they're all law enforcement. so when, uh, when you but when you're in sorry sorry Laura, but okay. when you're in school we might be getting at the same thing like you know, were you extra well behaved? Were you a little more That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So it seemed so back those the the St. Pete cops back then used to call us the West End Gang. I'm not really sure why. Did you have gang they, signs? They, no, but they used to call us the West End Gang. But back us then, being yeah, your, me and my brother Bart and okay. a, and a few of our, our buddies. But okay. mm. um, they basically had permission to just if we, they caught us doing something wrong, we were no different than anybody else. They would just whoop our asses, bring us home. Did so, they catch you? No, I was too good. However, <laughs> the worst Tactical thing they wanted then. was like for my mom to say, well, I'll call on your dad kind of thing. So we yeah. just kind of, you know, we learned quickly. But just to, we even though we did some stupid things, we always never wanted to be, to make our, our parents look bad, our brothers yeah. look bad. Yeah. Sure. Even though you think just because you're a family member, they're going to give you some, some slack. No. It doesn't work that just way. Just the opposite, no. actually. Does, yeah. right. Back hmm. then, I mean. Like, and that was probably just, by design. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it worked, I guess. But so they were all at St. Pete, right? Yes. Okay. So you go through. What was your first job? 
Uh, so I worked in like in high school. I worked in an auto parts store, and then um, I did some at the cable company. Mm. Back then, it was called Paragon Cable. All right, and then turned to Time Warner. Mm-hmm. But I remember driving around in the van, and I would see police cars pass by, and I'm like, no. And I made good money at the cable company, but I would just see the police cars, and I'm like, nah, this isn't for me. So then I just basically I left. I joined the academy track, which was the two year academy where you get your degree mm. and certified at the same time. Yeah. I'm um, plugging along, doing my thing. I was actually in the AmeriCorps over at St. Pete at the time um, because they paid for college. Now, what is that? It basically, it's like a program where you get paid, but you're like a CPO. So you work with the CPOs. You're unarmed. You just do community events, okay. bike, bike, um, bike patrol type stuff. And, like volunteer and kind of stuff. Volunteer stuff. Okay. But again, they paid for your college. I did a lot of ride-alongs. I, I took that time to basically do some ride-alongs to learn from a lot of these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once I got certified, I wasn't done with my degree yet, but I just wanted to be a cop. So I said, screw the degree, came over. I tried to apply for St. Pete. They regretfully but. turned me down. Oh, why? Yeah, I don't know. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, were just, there were just too many D-bolts there. Yeah. I was going to get confused. Too many like, D-bolts, yeah. Too many D-bolts. The West, the, 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 no, the male would get this. all they, misdirected. <laughs> and, yeah. they, they couldn't handle this shit, I have to say. So, but anyways, it, it, it destroyed me. Because I, that's my dad worked there, my brothers worked yeah. there. I knew everybody there. I was very upset about it. But I swear, the day I got the call saying I, I, I didn't get hired, back then it was Everett Rice. Mm-hmm. He called mm-hmm. me up. He says, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, I'm looking for a job." He goes, "Well, not no more. I'll have you hired in three days." Wow. I'm like, "All right." I have never looked back. Why did he call you? He knew my dad from working oh, with St. Pete, okay. and then my mom. I guess my mom was part of his uh, campaign at one point. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't care how they knew him. I just glad he called me. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I was yeah like, I think that, who yeah. just gets dad, a call from the sheriff? Because my dad was 20 years at St. Pete and then 25 years, I think, at the state attorney's office. So he kind of knew mm-hmm. a lot of people around. Very cool. So you didn't look back. So no. Um, what was your, obviously, you start off in patrol yep. back then. So, so you had already been through the academy. You, yes. had, you were certified. Yep. So you just come straight into in-house. Yep. How was that? It was... I, I'll go give a good story. Day one, day one, an in-house. We're out at the where the range is now. It's an old range. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing these dummy. You you put dummy rounds in the gun. You do tap racks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You point it at the ceiling and you did boom. You pull the trigger, tap rack. I don't remember the guy's name because uh, this was back in 1999. But we're sitting there. We're doing our tap racks. They pull it to the roof. Pow! Live <gasps> round in the gun. I'm like. <gasps> Day one. So I'm like, this is how this shit works. Okay, great. Yikes. Uh, so we all have to leave. The homicide even comes out to do a, like, mm-hmm. a little investigation. We realized right. it was just an accident. But so that's how day one started. Wow. Wow. So I, think, <laughs> I don't remember how long the program was back then, but uh, I learned a lot at this place. Did, did you, growing up, obviously, around cops, your family and everything, did you have expectations? Did you feel like you were pretty confident coming in? Because I'm sure, you know, your, your dad, your family, your brothers were like, hey, this is the deal. This is what you got to. They'd probably try to help you along. But did, yeah. w- were you really prepared or did some things catch you by surprise? So there's a, it was terrifying because everybody, you know, everybody knew my dad and what a good cop he was. Mm. And my, my brothers, they were just really good street cops from everything I heard. So everybody used to always tell me, you got big shoes to fill. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, shit, that's a lot of pressure that I don't want to have. Right. And I was hoping maybe coming here, not a lot of people would know, but... They all knew. They all... I mean, they, don't, they all knew my dad for the most part. Some knew my brother that worked in narcotics back then. Um, but between... Even the sheriff worked in narcotics with my dad, Chief Stefan, and all these guys. So, yeah. So they'd all... So you got big shoes to fill. Well, my shoes are 11s. That's about all I can do. <laughs> so... The expectations were there, which actually helped me because I didn't want to let them down. I never right. wanted to, to disrespect the name, the mm-hmm. family name when it comes to law enforcement. So it kind of gave me a little bit of an edge. And, yeah. you know, I've always wanted to obviously be a cop and be successful. So there you go. I think it's worked. I would say so. Yeah. I mean, you, you made it on the podcast. So yeah, that's, that's true. That's what else can you do? Right. You, you know what I heard about this guy before I knew who he was? Never met him. Maybe like saw him in passing. I heard the phrase tactical genius. Whoa. Tactical genius. Now that's, those are super high expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Only so, my so, name so, and genius doesn't go together. <laughs> so when I first met <laughs> you, that, the Apple that, store, maybe. That's, yeah. what, that's what I was coming with. And like a few people said that. A few different people said that. Tactical genius. Okay. So we got to find out on the yeah, podcast well. if that's true. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you come out, FTO, everything go well there? No problems? Yeah, no, no issues there. Never got held back. Uh, kind of just did all of my phases and moved along. Mm-hmm. So then out on the road to start? Yep, started on the road. You? I was uh, So back then we had, we didn't have 
well, we had our squads, but we were we rolled. Like I was in squad five, which I'd work squad three for two days, squad one, two days, and then wherever they need me on that fifth day. Mm-hmm. So I worked in Baskins and I worked in Loman. Mm. I had the best of both worlds. So I just, and I always wanted to go to narcotics. I knew I always wanted to go to narcotics. So I was working in two drug areas that, yeah. would, mm-hmm. that would help no me. No shortage hopefully. there. No. So I loved it. I mean, I had a great time out there. All I wanted to do was look for drugs, take my calls, and go find more drugs. So now, was there was that all purely based on your family history working narcotics? Yes. You just wanted to do that? Yeah. I wanted to have a beard, drive Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> drove a Mustang, but <laughs> oh. I had beards. We're still there. All right. All yeah. right. Where do you... So you go to narcotics first. That's for a special assignment. Yeah. So I interviewed three times for narcotics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went up against some heavy hitters back then that were interviewing with against me, and a couple of them had already been there. So... I got it. And every time I'd ask them, what do you want me to do? Just keep doing what you're doing, arrest people. So I would do that. And then I think the third, the fourth time I was going to interview, they called me and said, you have the spot. We're putting the post out there, but you have it. And then I went out there, I think in 2003. Okay. So you didn't get in the first time then? No. It, okay. And then it was. Yeah. So having a D bold last name, thinking everybody thinks, oh, you're daddy's boy and. Nope, mm-hmm. didn't work. Didn't work. Mm-hmm. Nope, had to earn it myself. Which is good. Yeah. yeah. That's the way to do it. I that way. I can relate. Um, okay. So. What is it about, you know, what, what is the best way you can summarize and kind of explain, you know, the mindset in narcotics? Like, what is the, do you just go into narcotics and, and just go start buying drugs? Like, yeah. how does that work? Now, on day one, you yeah. know, they want you to try to buy drugs. Okay. It's, it's uh, if you're not a people person, right. you're going you're gonna to have a hard time. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem talking to people, so it was fairly easy, but it's still nerve-wracking because you're going into an unknown you have a couple people backing you up, but I mean, you just got to be able to talk. Mm-hmm. So, because you could be robbed or shot at any moment, right. it could all go bad. Anytime. But if you don't know the lingo, like I yeah. just left the road, I think I know everything. I don't know. Shit. That feels like the hardest part. Right. Yeah. So, how do you ask for a bag of weed? Yeah. You don't say, hey, can I get a bag of weed? Uh, can, can I have I, can some I get marijuana, a please, sir? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I'd like to purchase cannabis, please. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it's just the, the amount of money you want. Uh-huh. You know, I got, let me get 40, you know, uh-huh. things like that. So, you learn it really quickly. And I don't remember who my very first deal was, but I remember it was just a regular old go up to somebody and buy some crack, whatever it was. Can you still say crack? What are, tell us some good words. What are some good words that we can throw around? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long <laughs> time. Out of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, it's just mind boggling to me because it, it really is an underworld. It is. Yeah. The, the people don't, people are going about their business all the time. They have no idea what's happening around But it's them. a very relaxed world in a sense because you just have to play natural. Yes, it's, you're, you're lying, you're, but. You're, yeah, you're lying. <laughs> But you're you're always on ready to go, mm-hmm. but at the same time you just have to be just chilled out and yeah. pretend like it's not a big deal. If you act nervous, they'll sense it and they're gone. Right. But yeah. at the same time, drug dealers are very greedy. So if, if they say, "Man, you're a cop, man," I'll just fuck you you walk away. Ten minutes goes by, their eyes turn green, and they call mm-hmm. you back, and then you go back and you sell them, you buy the dope. Right, because there's that misconception that you have to tell them you're a cop if they ask, yes. yeah. which is not true. Why? So and there's that's a story. I wore a shirt. That said undercover cop one time. And I no. the, the deal was at 54th <laughs> Avenue no way. and 66th Street. I think there's a, 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 a gym there now. But I had an undercover cop shirt on. And the guy goes, you know, you have to tell me you're a cop, right? I said, man, it's just a joke shirt. I ain't no cop. And he sold me the eight ball of Coke. And I left. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. But um, no, we don't. Uh, <laughs> so so um, what, how? Yeah. Go ahead. No, you're well, I, I, I want to know some of your looks. When you were undercover, oh, you, know, you see all these people who are all clean cut now. What what did you look like? So there? I've had mohawks. Most of the time back then, it was a lot of the goatees. Okay. But I'd let my goatee run very long. I would separate. I'd have handlebars and one in the middle. Uh huh. Um, wow. Do you have pictures? Just, Do you have any pictures? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a huge picture person. No. But I'm sure there's some. Back then, it was Polaroids. So I don't know where the heck these Polaroids are. <laughs> Oh, we can the have trading of the, cards uh, of your different looks. Yeah, there it is. prostitutes, Debo. Yeah. There you go. Debo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I so love I don't it. know. I don't. I mean, I'm sure. So my wife used to complain because every holiday I had a different look, and she used to <laughs> beg, "Can we just have one normal photo?" So she there's yeah. a few of them in there, but yeah. But you never grew your hair long in the back. It was always when I when I was in Tiz, uh-huh. the last one it was a reverse mullet. It was like longer on top and shorter on the back. And that must it, have looked horrible. Side. It was, I loved it, but I was getting there and then I left, but uh-huh. I was, they hated it. <laughs> so it's weird because I, I used to look, all these different looks, you, you, I would go to school and drop my kids off and people would mm-hmm. look at you like, oh, 
Yeah, you look like a scumbag. What are you, do, what are you doing here? Bag. It's kind of fun to be a dirtbag, though. Isn't yeah. it? it is. But, but everyone it's watches like, you and gives you the I, side I, eye. I'm like, and... don't judge. I mean, but you get you get the perspective like of yeah. how other people feel. Yeah. So like, I'll go down to the, the mall with my wife and my kids, and people look at you like you know. You sex, drugs, or money, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I look like me and I got a good looking wife and good looking kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, sex, drugs, or money, that's what everybody thinks when you're an ugly looking, burly dude when you have a good looking family. I'm like, no, I'm just a normal piece of shit that has a job that <laughs> <laughs> buys drugs. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's weird being judged by other people yeah. when you're just actually trying to do the right thing, but they don't know. Does right. that change the way yeah. you look at other people? Like, are you less likely to judge people when you see them looking of like course. scumbags? Or do you look for the tells? You still look no, at the tails and you're like, nah, he's probably undercover. He gets a pass. No, you can tell. Yeah. There's a look. Yeah. We have a look yeah. that you can't get rid of no matter what you look like. A walk, a, the way you carry oh, yeah. yourself. No, I'm pretty sure I've spotted some. Yeah. There's, Unless know they're what you're brand for. new and they don't know how to do it yet, mm-hmm. there, you have a look. Hmm. But. So a narcotics, there's day shift mm-hmm. and nights. Night. So do you when you start, do you start on days? No, you start on nights. Okay. Back then we actually had we had days, nights. Mm-hmm. Vice and Intel. I think we had one of the largest NARC units in the entire state. Really? Uh, we were like 80 some odd people. We had nine squads, I think. Oof. Yeah, it was, we were big. What do you think made that need so high here? Just the tourism folks coming in? Is that What, what drives that? I don't know. Hmm. But obviously we're doing You're staying busy, fine. obviously. But yeah, they are. Yeah. Now they're down to the three squads. But so we got rid of like, like two-thirds of the drugs. Yeah, so we got rid of the day shift. The Vice, I mean, that's a victimless crime. Yeah. We used to go to the yeah. strip clubs. Things of that nature. Yeah, no point in enforcing that. No. That's so, <clears throat> so. Yeah, I started on night shift back then. Night shift was a tactical narcotic side. Um, they did all the short term cases, so they would work some cases, then buy some, do some search warrants, do some buy bustings of that nature. Day shift was the long term cases that involved wiretaps and okay. just long term, you know, one two year cases. So tactical is just kind of go out there, cause quick, getting it done. Yeah, and then you're you're kind of building the case. So theoretically, if you tie some stuff together on night shift, then it becomes a day shift. They thing. just came, take it, took it. Okay. They wouldn't even ask. They would just, it's ours now. Oh. What the hell? Okay. I want to go to day shift one day. Let me learn how to do this. But no, they were just here. Mm. So you were on night shift the whole time? That time, yes. Okay. I did twice in narcotics. So anything from that first time, you know, was there anything you were just like, man, I never, you know, dad or your brother never talked about this. Like what, or, or anything that, that was startling to you? Um... Or is oh. it just like, man, I'm really doing it. I yeah, made it. it's more of that. Yeah. Just I had to make my own mm-hmm. out there, you know. And I never really heard a lot of my dad's stories. Mm-hmm. He never really talked about it a whole lot, you know. And I get why because yeah. he doesn't, you know. It's it's narcotics. Yeah. You don't talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but it was just it was it was it was an eye opener for sure. Because back then, again, there was a lot of some some serious guys out there who who had been out there a long time. And if you went out there and looked bad, they would eat you alive. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to get kicked out, obviously. So you had to. Yeah. But I, I moved along quickly out there. I would think I was a FTO my first year. I made corporal mm. the second year. Wow. Mm. A narcotics FTO. What does that look like? Well, it's it sucks in a sense because all the dope you're supposed to buy, that recruit now buys. Mm. It's not really no different than the street. They have a checklist. They have a lot of things they have to go through. We do the, the daily observation reports, things like that. But you, but, just, but you can't always like straight up observe them. Like you're obviously no. watching from a distance. We're and, just listening just, and watching. Just my, just my it would be weird seat. with two dirt bags, one yeah. that has a notebook taking notes <laughs> while you're buying drugs. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Though. So <laughs> when, when, it all depends on the deal. If you're if you have to go solo, like with an informant or something, we'll have a car set aside listening. You know, everybody, mm-hmm. everything's recorded. So, but sometimes we'll roll two, three deep, and that just makes it so much more fun. Because mm-hmm. back uh-huh. then we had like Chris Hale and. And and Eric Gibson, guys like that, and mm. we had they were my FTOs. Mm. It was a good time. Oh my god! Yeah. Any any story stand out? My very first my tell. very first yeah. deal. I do remember. It was in Clearwater Largo Road, and the guy gave me his ID. He had to go get it, so I gave him my money, and he gave me his ID. I'm like, well, that's stupid. I don't even know who you are. I didn't know who he was at first, but he left me his ID, and he leaves to go get the dope. And he never came back. I'm like, well, shit, now what do I do? I lost $40. The sergeant's going to be pissed. <laughs> so needless to say, we went and got my money back. doesn't matter how, but mm-hmm. we went and got my Th- money things back. Things happened. Yeah. And then the next day, he forgave me, and he came and sold me my $40 worth of dope. Wow. I'm like, good. But that was my first deal. <laughs> so did you find out why he gave you his ID? No, he was just ripping me off. And he th- figured I'd leave it there, and he'd go back to the location to get the ID the next day. What money, what money do you use for buys? Like, is there just a, a closet of money and you just take some money out, check it out? There's a safe of money. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, that makes more sense. Yeah. 
All the money we, you know, <laughs> we, <laughs> closet of money <laughs> on hangers. Yeah. <laughs> well, you launder it first, then you yeah, hang it up to yeah, dry, yeah. and then of course. Hey yo. <laughs> yeah. But that's a hard group. I remember my very first day out there. Um, Ryan Buckley was out there, mm-hmm. and I left for something, and I came back, and there was a transfer memo that he forged by Sheriff <gasps> Coates. My <laughs> desk was empty. <gasps> And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, day one, they already kicked me the hell out. And this memo looked legit. I was going back to the road, and I'm like, what the fuck? So sorry. No, it's all right. No, you're, you're going to get so, a nice siren. Then I, I come, I'm, I'm looking around, and, you know, it's a ghost town, but they're all hiding around the corner. I open up one of the doors, one of the little closet doors, and all my shit's in there, and I'm like, all right, good one. <laughs> good <laughs> scared one. the hell out of me, though. But. Uh, what did you do to get them back later on? So this is a story Buckley told me yesterday, but because of that, I, I – he did something to my car. I don't remember what it was. And then we pretended like I, I got into a car crash. So one of the guys, he's no longer here. He made a, a big deal about it, like Diebel's in the hospital, this and that. We let the sergeant know. So Buckley didn't really give a shit at the time, but he comes in on Monday and I'm not there yet. So he uh-huh. goes into the sergeant's like, hey, is everything okay? He goes, come close the door. He goes, yeah, they're just messing with you, but they're going to say Diebel got into a car crash. So I had, I had a cast... I had everything. Damn, and they so blew I, it. Yeah, he did. And so I come into the office, and I had this cast, and I'm, like, refusing to talk to Buckley. And he's like, what's wrong? But he knows. So he comes over to my desk. He's like, man, listen, I'm really sorry. He takes my arm and just, bam, ah. smashes on the table. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Gigs up. So he's oh. hard to get. Buckley's hard to get. Mm. Mm. <laughs> one of my best stories, and this guy is gone, but he did something to me, and I'll like, leave that out. <laughs> Later. Later. No, yeah. So... He had, a, he had a wife and four kids. He lived in St. Pete. To get him back, I actually wrote, I printed up maybe 200 house moving sales. And I went to two Publixes with his address starting at 7 a.m. <laughs> and I passed these things out on every car I possibly could. <laughs> at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning, people were knocking on his oh, door. Oh, wow. To, everything must go, right? <laughs> he actually locked his doors, packed up his wife and kids, and left for the entire day. That is hilarious. The bad thing is, on one of the flyers, I had his address. On the other flyer, I had another address, which actually existed. So that poor person got the same thing, not knowing that he was part of my prank. So, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, whatever. Maybe he had to sell some things. Yeah. (laughs) If y'all look over there, I'm looking. Yeah. Don't worry. We appreciate that. Next time, I want to be that way. I'll take care of any threat that comes in that (laughs) direction. Don't worry. I doubt it. What, are you going to throw a pencil at him? Not any. I'm going to charm them. Come on. Okay. That's what I do now. I I, I, I left the law enforcement behind. But yeah, the pranks out there are pretty good. That's one awesome. guy, Wait. we actually, he, I don't know, he did something to our, well, somebody's food. Food's out of play out there, right? You don't touch with somebody's food. Right. And he put some X-Lex in there. Oh, uh, no. Well, if you take liquid. That, that's like an actual charge. That's a criminal yes, charge. That's, that's bad. If you take liquid soap and you put it in somebody's tobacco, that's worse than mm. an X-Lex. Really? Oh, yeah. He was gone. He left for the day to just go sit on the toilet for the rest of the day. Oh, my oh, God. Liquid soap, huh? Yeah, they're brutal out there. So you, you got to draw a line somewhere. That way nobody. I'm going to make a note it. of that. Yeah, I, I actually am too. Yeah. All right, so you said you were out in narcotics <laughs> twice. For, for literary yes. purposes. Literary. It's not oh, for, yeah, it's no, going to go into kidding. a book. Literature. Um, <laughs> how, uh, how long were you out there the first time? I think four years. Okay. So now let me tell you a story as to how I got kind of left narcotics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Because yeah, being the SWAT supervisor now, you wouldn't believe this story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... I, the only reason I never got on SWAT at an earlier age is because I was just so involved in narcotics. And, it, and I didn't want to give the time to both because I just wanted to dedicate Focus every on, narcotics. Right. Yeah. So there's always been a, a battle between like search warrants and who does more. So back then, even narcotics does more search warrants than SWAT. Mm-hmm. You know, SWAT has a criteria that they have to meet in order for them to do it. So I never did it. But yet we used to make fun of them a lot. So I wrote make this. Make fun of SWAT. Fun of, yeah. In front of yeah. SWAT, yeah, fun of SWAT. So I wrote this joke. It was 10 reasons why we shouldn't use SWAT. It's raining. It's <laughs> snowing. The house is empty. <laughs> there's a gun on the table. I mean, there was 10 things that were just unexplainable, but it, the, the raining one actually happened. We were on a search warrant to do a search warrant. The guy wasn't home, so we were going to leave. Well, the guy shows up. We said, uh-huh. hey, he's here. Can we hit it? They said, oh, no, it's raining. Cops never want to get wet. This is universally well, I agree. known. I agree. But so we, we ended up leaving. So that's what sparked this memo. It was just a joke, right? Mm-hmm. So I take this memo. I print it. Now, here's the thing. I was on light duty. I think I had a shoulder surgery. So all I did was type and I hit print. Three other corporals helped me come up with all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I take it. I print it and I put it on a couple of SWAT guys' desks. 
And one of them takes it to the team leader meeting and says, here, we don't know who did this, but this happened. And they were all sorts of pissed. <laughs> so we get called, all the supervisors get called in the lieutenant's office, and they basically, they think it's, they think it's George Martin that did it and Ryan Buckley. And I said, nope, it was me. And I look at the other three corporals, and they didn't move, and I said, and it was only me. <laughs> so they asked me to, you know, in a couple of weeks, give up my corporal stripes. And then oh. I, after that, I'm like, screw it. I'm, I'm going to continue just to keep screwing up, and I'm going to get rolled out. So I'm one of those guys, if I know it's going to happen, I'll just leave it on my own. Mm -hmm. Leave on good terms, no big deal. But I went to every SWAT team leader back then. I said, listen, it was me. It was, I was just a joke. And they were like, it was you? And I'm like, yeah. They said, oh, we don't give a shit. We know you do stuff like that. I'm like, uh -huh. well, it doesn't sound like it. I mean, <laughs> right. but I'm coming to you. I am truly sorry. It was right. just a joke. Right. And they were like, yeah, well, half of it's true. And I'm like, well, well why, damn. What the hell? Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, so that's when I left. I so think that's I when you left. left. So, yeah, 2006-ish. So, okay, so like 2000, what did you say? You went in 2003? Three. 2003, 2000, okay. yeah. So then, then what? Then I went to the road. Um, back then I went on, I, got, I joined the STAR team, which was the Strategic Tactical Analytical Response Team. Mm, that sounds... Street crimes. Okay. Let's, let's break it that down. Yeah. So I did that for, I think, a year. I got kicked out of that. <laughs> Why? So... So there was a... Well, hold on, hold on. Did you guys... Ha was that like a, a special team? I, obviously, yeah. it's a special team, so, but uniform cars... So we used well, to wear the Class B black uniform black. back okay. then. Yeah, yeah. So those. there was three squads, two down south, one up north. Okay. And kind of like tis in a sense, minus all the warrants that we used to do, but they, if there was a burglary pattern, they'd go out and they'd work those burglary patterns. We'd just work drugs. Whatever this place wanted. There was This was back when Coates was sheriff. Um and we were having a bunch of the budget issues and starting to try to figure out what, what we were doing. We didn't get some raises. So somebody was calling Sheriff Coates at his house and threatening him. Well, there's only one way to get the sheriff's number, and that's the SO net. Yeah. It's our internal. Yes. So our listeners. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all thinking it's another deputy, right? But we are on 24 hour surveillance in certain neighborhoods where all the, the pay phones that were used. Mm -hmm. So we're 24 hour surveillance when we're watching these phones. I remember the one day some lady comes up to my window. She knocks on the window. I roll it down. She goes, everything okay? I said, yep. And I roll it back up. She knocks again. And she goes, well, no, listen, I have an infant in the house. I want to make sure everything's safe. I know y'all are watching the store. I said, no, sweetie, everything's fine. Somebody's just calling and threatening the sheriff. She says, okay, thank you. And she leaves. So I'm like, no big deal. I'm making her feel peace of mind. And I don't believe it's yeah. her. She's not calling the sheriff because she doesn't care about our, our money issues. So the next day, uh, one of the other guys in another unit went into that same store this lady comes up to him and says, hey, did you catch him yet? And then he started this whole internal investigation. Oh I got hit with this level five violation. And then the media found out about this. So I'm thinking, all right, great. They think I called the media. Well, I did not call the media. So I'm like, perfect. So I go and I read my file and it's like, I, I, I compromised an agency investigation. I told oh. this lady, I went, oh no, because I love <laughs> narcotics. I love, I don't talk about cases. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I didn't do this. I, I told her, yeah. So I admitted, yeah, I told her this, but my intention was not to compromise the investigation. So I went through my whole board. I got a day off. I got kicked out of Star, and they put me in Madeira Beach. The hardest thing about that was not they kicked me out of Star, but they put me in Madeira Beach. <laughs> not a lot happening? No. <laughs> I think the first day I got a complaint. Kids were playing in the streets. Somebody complained about the And they the weren't kids playing the with street. drugs. No, and I'm right. like, oh. I don't see a problem here. So he complained on me. And, <laughs> you know, after you get in, in, in trouble, you're uh, sitting on points. You know, in our, if you get in trouble yeah, again, yeah. those points keep adding up. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't do this. So I went to the major and the captain back then, and I'm like, listen, I, I'll, you can give me another day. Just put me back in Loman. <laughs> so I think another complaint came in, and finally they put me back in Loman. I'm not, I'm not trying to hide. I'm, I'm going to go work. Like, right. just mm -hmm, use uh -huh. me. So they did. And then I did a couple more years on the road. And then I went North County, and then I went to training. Okay. So mm -hmm. what was that like, training? What, what, what brought you to training? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was out of in service one day and the, the guys that were out there were talking to me about it. And so I, for years, I've since maybe 2004, I would, I would, had been teaching with MCTFT through the college, um, a is, tactical yeah. narcotics. Well, yeah, what is that? So it's multi-jurisdictional counter drug task force training. Okay. That's okay. what I thought. Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Tip yeah. of your tongue. We were teaching tactical narcotics. Basically, it's a one-week school. It's up in Camp Blanding. We started teaching it all over the place. We'd go to the Bahamas, St. Croix, St. Thomas, you name it. Kind of taught all over the place. So we, because I had been teaching so much, there was an opening in training. And it was me and another person who had put in, and they were begging me, like, listen, it's either you or this other person. Can you please put in? 
And I'm like, all right. So I interviewed the other person interviewed. I got it. I think they just didn't want. They didn't know, want that guy. He person. sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. So I went out there for a couple of years. Training was awesome, to be honest with you. And I yeah. know I listened to the podcast the other day about Freddy's and that that's an amazing group. It is, it's, it is Groundhog's Day to an extent out there when you're doing the in services and whatnot. But the recruits and the things of that nature, it just makes it a whole, it's a, it's a lot of fun out there. You can be creative. You can do a lot of things, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. The, so, so why is the in-service different? They, they don't, they're not happy to be there? They're not thrilled to continue no, their education? No, they don't no? want to be there. No, they, they work midnights. They're inconvenienced. They're part, not a part of their daily stuff. It's just, it's, it's sad. Sometimes I remember teaching a class and one guy was on his laptop. So I just stopped. Mm-hmm. I just look at him. Let me know when you're done. He closed it. I'm like, all right. So I continue on. He does it again. I just sit there. Let me know when you're done. So, it, but yes, it got annoying. But yeah, you know, I, I told the story the other day. I was teaching CPR, and when it came to the AED, I always taught the tactical L. So when you're putting the 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 like the pads the pads on, you're making an L, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, the, uh, and, and we should clarify that they know tactical L because that's how you position yourself. Correct. When, when you're, you're caress engaging contact a, team, a right? subject, so you don't have cross. Yeah. Correct. So. And Casey Hunter was in that class, and like a week later, he, he emails me saying, hey, thank you very much. One thing that I did take away from that class was that tactical L, and he had saved somebody up in Safe Harbor. Mm. Oh, boy. So I've always taken that. I was like, if I say help one person, yeah. right, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. That email, I told him this the other day about when it came to the training, I said that one event is all I needed to know that somebody learned something every single day. They right. just never told us about it, but right. you just that's, to that's about the it. purpose. That's why you do it. Right. Yeah. So I want to talk more about your... Training philosophy, but this might be once we start talking more about SWAT, because I know you have some, uh, we used to, like when I was in the academy and, and, and in-house, um, physical, physical punishment, like PTing was the punishment. If you screwed up, you were in front leaning rest, you were doing push-ups, you were running. And mm-hmm. you have some different philosophies about whether that's a, a, good, a good tactic or not. What do you think about that? I, um, so I'm all for it. However, you have to know the crowd. Yeah. If, if it's an in-service and you have some people who've been here 25 years that they don't even want to be here, mm-hmm. asking them to do push-ups because they messed up, it's just not the right time. Um, Got to read the room. Yeah. yeah if, you're, if it's a SWAT thing, obviously there's a higher standard for that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. They, they love to suffer. They do. Yeah. That's why they keep coming back. Uh, I've seen it done with um, like the recruits and stuff. The recruits yeah. are different because yeah. they're trying to earn that position yeah. and yeah. earn that respect. Um, and they really, really don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you got you just it all depends on the group, mm. time and a place. So you're in training for a couple years. Yeah, I did two years, and, and then narcotics called me. They had an opening, mm. and then I for the day shift spot. Okay. So I went back. So yeah, so it was a day shift spot. So uh, I went back as the day shift corporal. Okay. Out there, which was a lot of fun, a lot of overtime, long term cases. We did a couple wiretaps. I learned a lot. I really did. Um, yeah, I think I did what four more years there. Okay, on that mm-hmm. one. And then, w- when when do you join SWAT in all this? Okay, so 2010. Okay, we had the, I joined the technical response team, the robot team back then. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. I don't remember why I did. Because robots are cool. So, well, some I, maybe it was Armstrong. Sergeant Armstrong asked me. He was part of it. Him and uh, Lieutenant Osterlin. So we were talking mm-hmm. about. It, and I said, Yeah, I'll do that. So I joined them, and you know, back then, that's when they started basically we were one team, right? They tried to start that concept of being one team, even though there's so many sub teams. But we all wore the SWAT team shirt. Now I always said I, I, I wanted to make a TRT shirt because I didn't have the same training, and, training and whatnot. Yeah. Because, had, I didn't go through the that, same as yeah. the other guys. So John Miller, Sergeant Miller, was in charge of the team at the time. I went up to him. I said, "Hey, can we have our own shirts that say TRT?" He goes, "No." So well, why not? He goes, well, go, just go through SWAT school. <laughs> I said, okay. Easy as that. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Piece of cake. But I told him, I said, I don't have the blood to sweat the tears. I didn't go to SWAT school. I didn't try out. I don't want to wear it. It's a disrespectful to the team. Yeah. That's what I care about, not mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to never give them some respect. Well, then he's just like, I'm not going to do it. Go to SWAT school. All right. So he says, see who else wants to go on the TRT team. So I went back to those guys and they're like, No. <laughs> I'm not doing it, but Lieutenant Nalvin at the time, Rich Nalvin, mm. he decided to go, and I'm like, perfect. So he and I went to SWAT school in 2011. What was that like? It was the best two weeks you don't ever want to do again. Mm. Mm. It's a nice Good way, way of putting it, it yeah. yeah. Yeah, so 
I mean, Isn't it was it, hard. It's one week now? It's or? two. It's still two? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. Starts, starts, on starts next week, right? Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. But the weather's going to be amazing. It's yeah. Amazing. They got um, lucky this time. They did. That, yeah. But it, it, it sucked. I ain't going to lie. It, it sucked. There's long days. Just, it's physical. However, if you, <laughs> I'm not going to use his name, but <laughs> there's always guys on the team who are weaker than others. Mm-hmm. I would just use their weakness to my advantage, <laughs> pretend like I'm helping them, but I'm only helping myself. <laughs> you get a chance to I'm rest while myself. you're uh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. You know, that's so, genius. Oh, well, wow. like, I use it again. Tactical right. genius. Tactical genius. Yes. Tactical genius. So if we're going to do 20 push-ups, mm-hmm. I just pretend like I can only do 10, and but I can do 20. So I just struggle at 10. And uh, so once they see everybody's struggling, I'm giving out clues here for the next few years. <laughs> if they listen this far, then <laughs> well, we're, we're not going to, yeah, we're not going to air this until after this. So, yeah. so. Well, no. Um, so if we're only doing, if I can only do 10 in my mind, but I can do 20, once the, the cadre of red shirts see that everybody's struggling, they basically go to stop it, right? So they say, all right, everybody mm-hmm. hold it up and we're done. Mm-hmm. So I have still 10 more pushups in me. So I have enough time, strength to yeah. basically do one of these things. So basically I would fake it. And then until the end, I would stand up and I got this and then we're good. They say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so you're on SWAT then while you're in training then? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yep. then when you were, went back to narcotics, still on SWAT? Still on SWAT. So once I tried, once I did the SWAT school though, I went back to John Miller and I said, there's no way I'm doing that in two weeks and not trying out. So then the following year, I actually tried out for the team. Even though I was already on SWAT team, mm-hmm. to the robot mm-hmm. side, I still had to do the tryout to become the operator. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, what does a tryout consist of? Oh, God, it's just one long day. It's uh, a little bit of stretching, physical stretching. I like that part. I'm in so far. Yeah. <laughs> we do the mile run, I think, back mm-hmm. then. You still have me, I think. Still, yeah, still the same as you were there. Uh, yeah, that you, we you went do, to. Yeah, we're you pretending the, we don't know so that the audience can the, hear about it. Well, just re- if you remember something. <laughs> I I'm, do, I'm, I do. I'm old and I forget. <laughs> I have to, you do the dummy drag, you yep. grab the halo, yep. up the stairs, yep. down the stairs, around the corner. It's a handgun shield shoot with a uh-huh. simonition. Mm-hmm. Take the vest off and then you start the obstacle course. Yeah. And then... Which is it. super challenging. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. With yeah. climbing and swinging and crawling and... So it, and hoisting intense. yourself up yeah. things, and, yeah. And back then, it Lots wasn't, it wasn't pass fail. Everything was scored. Yeah. So mm. I uh, like the rope. There's a uh-huh. yeah. I don't know ten foot rope. Right? Uh-huh. That's not my thing. Yeah. I'll never have to just climb a rope. So I get to that rope and I went. <laughs> you get three tries. So I went one, two, three. I can't do it, and I just go on to the next. <laughs> Saving your strength for the things that really matter, like right. the wall so, or the. So I remember at the end of that whole day, I scored zero points on the O course. <laughs> I scored all my points, though, at the shooting, the handgun shooting, the shotgun shooting, the interview. So uh-huh. I came second overall of the entire oh. day because I know my strengths. That's yeah. a no course. No, I that's mean, smart. It's, it's, I understand the purpose for having a no course, but it's not realistic. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to – I'll shoot everything, and they can jump the walls. I'll drive through the walls. <laughs> you know, it's like running. Yeah. I, I remember I was on a call in Baskin, and somebody ran for me, and I'm not a fast runner. There was a kid on the bike. I said, give me borrow your bike. I took his bike, and I went and caught the bad guy, and I gave it back. Wow. But he had two flat tires. That's so out like, of a movie. That doesn't happen in real oh, life. Oh, it does you happen. Just... I had two flat tires chasing this bad guy. It was a doing more work than just running, but I caught the bad guy, and I did that twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> the second person had air in his tires, at least, so That's I was very yeah. thankful. I thought someone runs you just like, okay, here's where the canine track starts. No. Just, just mark the track. No, but so I'll work smart when it comes to that kind of stuff if i can find that way around it i will that make it easier for me because i like it mm-hmm. you got to well then yeah. you're not as gassed when you get there yeah, Hell yeah. No. yeah. yeah you might still to, have a fight more ready to, when you yeah, catch ready the guy. to fight right mm-hmm. yeah. all right so um because swat's been a part of what you do for a long time but it's yes but it's not what you're doing now so you still had some uc stuff going on after narcotics yep. right so so after narcotics i went to back then it was the violent offender warrant unit Vowu. Vowu. Everybody makes Did, fun of me because I say like Vowu. Vowu. It's like oh, if I like do a, this, it's like French, right? Yeah. Or is yeah. this Italian? I don't know. Oh, it could be either one. Could be either. Yeah. Yeah. So Vowu. Yeah. yeah, little accent. That was a whole lot of fun. That was <laughs> that was uh, that's probably so. I, I do. You, do you use a ruse in Vowu? Are there ruses in Vowu? Lots of ruses. In we like the word. So ruse. if you think about it, you have a, a bad guy inside of a house. There's yeah. no reason if we know that they're in the house, right? Can we go in there by a Florida State statute? Sure. But are we going to go in there? Is it the safest possible thing to do? No. So why not think of some ruses to get people get them out? out right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do it safely. All sorts of things we've done. I mean, yeah, I go way back to years and years ago. I don't think we use this anymore, but we used to set up like a domestic. 
a husband and wife out front yelling and screaming. Uh, and at everyone each other. wants to come out and see what's going on. Yeah. Of course. So yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. We comes out. The they do. We haven't done that. was a narc uh, years and years ago, but I like that. there's all sorts of things you can do now with the internet. And so, uh, oh, the internet. Um, <laughs> I, I had a query in my notes. I guess we're going to skip that, right? <laughs> Which one? The, um, like the fake accounts you use to, to catfish people. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you have, you, you will they pretend to be, and I'll tell you the best be one women and lure the men out. And oh, absolutely. Tell me about Every, that. Well, everybody wants, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Physical, biological needs. Yes. Yeah. Everybody wants it. So mm -hmm. you just, if you have a fake <laughs> Facebook account and you just start texting these people, oh yeah, they want it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And they're going to show up. And you're going to so, give it to so them. And we're going to give it to them. Give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we got, they're going to give it. The so best our, one, though, is to be honest with you, we'll call, like, we know they're home. We'll call their mom and we'll say, hey, I'm detective so-and-so uh, with burglary. I need to come uh -huh. talk to you. Is he there? And they, no, he's not here. Well, listen, I'm leaving my office now. I'll be there in about 20 minutes, right? The door opens up. <laughs> yep. We're already there. The door opens up. Uh -huh. and here we Boom. go. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah. That's genius. Yep. Yeah, so back, back back to the catfishing. So you're do you have specialized units for that? People who are good at, at texting guys, you just do it yourself. You, no, you, you, no. you just set a set of these hookups it's yourself. Super awkward. It's super awkward. I bet. Some what, guys, why do you think I'm making you talk about it right now? So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of my thing. Um some are better than others. Uh-huh. But I've done it a couple of times and successfully. I try to yeah, I try to make it as short as as possible so I don't mm -hmm. have to get too involved because it's it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> They asked for, it's so, so I, this, I had to get rid of the Facebook because I swear to God, I would wake up and just have a picture on <laughs> Facebook messenger of a penis. Uh -huh. It's like, no. And I would, I don't care if they had a warrant or not. I would delete them because I don't even want to talk to them. I don't, <laughs> You're not catching I'm gonna that. Go, no, I'm going to find them, mm -hmm. but just not, I don't want to see your. What you know. if you have to identify them that way? Right. Nope. Okay. So, <laughs> hold, so we can keep, but. So Vowu, yep. Uh -huh. violent, so what what kind of person is on? What kind of person are they are they looking for? Yeah, what were they looking for back then? Investigators. Um, it, so so people think that there's a misconception that we just knock on doors like they do on patrol and find warrants. It's not that simple. We do phone orders, um, a lot of Facebook stuff, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But it's not just going. We go to the, everybody's houses and talk to them. You know, we'll start at grandmas, cousins, friends. They're neighbors. You never, you'd be surprised how many neighbors don't like who used to mm. live next mm -hmm. to them. Oh, yeah, he's over here. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, sometimes it's just as easy as knocking on a door and oh, yeah, here you are. Mm -hmm. Wasn't expecting that. But it's a, there's a lot of work. Sometimes it's, you're talking six, seven months. Um, we, Johnny Wilmore had one. It was two years. Jerry wow. Peterson. Wow. Yeah. Two years. Tracking phones. It's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Then they get the reward of catching the bad guy. Yeah. They run. Right. And these so are people that they're, they're violent offenders. What kind, yeah. what kind of what kind of things do they do? Like, the, well, uh, the criteria was burglary or higher. Okay. Um, everything aggravated. Sometimes, if the, somebody called for a special request, we would we would do that as well. Mm -hmm. It was because you knew you're just going after the worst of the worst. I mean, and it was a race. So every night, warrants come out, and they all go to a warrants page, right? And everybody has access to that. But we would get it a little bit early. Like we'd get it emailed to us. Uh huh. And there's a couple of guys that would not go to sleep until they got it. <laughs> they want the and, best oh, ones, yeah. the most violent offenders. And it was fun because we would call the, the Warren's ladies. Like I would call them mm -hmm. and say, hey, listen, do me a favor. Give me five minutes. Send them me five minutes first and then send it to everybody else. So um. I'd go through it and I would tag it real quick. <laughs> and then she sent it to everybody and I already had mine. So mm -hmm. I was done. So then every, other people tried to you know, do that. And mm -hmm. Eventually, we, we all had to say, all right, stop. Everybody gets it at the same time. It's a free-for-all. And then it became one squad gets it on Monday, Wednesday. Friday is a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. And the other squad gets it Tuesday, Thursday. Friday is a free-for-all. So you're disappointed if you get stuck with a loser criminal? It's like, this guy's too well, easy to catch. He's, he's... You always have one at least ready. Yeah. We, we don't want more than three at a time. Uh -huh. But the good one comes. You'll put them aside a little bit and go after the really good one. But, yeah, yeah you don't want – you want the good ones. Yeah. I mean, and these are guys that are obviously being elusive. Yes. You know, these are not that, you know, they're, they, they, there have been, you know, instances where we've tried to take them into custody and, oh, they're, yeah. and yeah. they're, you know, on the run basically. Yeah. So, and a lot of those, we don't want just the regular patrol deputies to go trying to find right. them because being, having undercover vehicles, we can just sit and wait and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's boring sometimes, but it's the end result is always the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have to find the right time to go get them. It's not worth just doing a traffic stop, trying to stop them. Wait till they get gas. Wait till they go into the store on the yeah. way back. There's right. 
choose, choose, choose your, yeah, choose we don't, your position. We don't want it to get crazy. I mean, it, it does a lot, but it's a lot of fun. But at the same time, you got to think about everybody involved. Any, ha, any have, go ahead. I, I was going to say with all this adventure, have you gotten hurt? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's tell, a, tell us about some. Oh, well, <laughs> Dave Stang. That's oh, probably oh, the best go. one. Yeah. But he scheduled interviews today for his unit. So he purposely did that so he wouldn't be here. We're, we're so going to get Dave, him on eventually. Don't Dave worry. Stang ran He's me over list. back when I was in narcotics. Ran you over. Broke both my feet. <gasps> um, I broke in. Uh, now, wait, wait, now no, Dave don't, Stang, don't Stang is a big story. guy. So when you say he ran you car, over, okay. with this truck, with there, this four door Dodge pickup truck, he ran you over. Blue in color, yes. <laughs> Just your feet. Yeah. How, how'd that happen? Tell us, tell us the story on that one. All right. So we're, we're on the south side doing some window buys. Uh huh. So, so, like rolling up through neighborhood for yeah, your window when you, they sell I was you parked. Drugs. So let me, let me map it out for you. Mm-hmm. I know if you can't see it on the podcast here. So I'm here. There's, uh-huh. a, there's a big field right here. So let's say I'm right here. And Lieutenant Stang is over here. Yeah. In his car. In his truck. Yeah. Let's not minimize the size of this. Oh, sorry. Huge yeah. yeah. man in a huge vehicle. Yes, with three other people inside yes. of it. So it weighs even more Ooh, now. Yeah. yeah. So of bad guy's over here. He does the deal. The uh-huh. St. Pete police guys get out to try to get him, and he uh-huh. runs. So he runs right towards this building here next to this field. Mm-hmm. I'm here. I get out of my car, and he's running along the building right at me. Yeah. He's also running right at Stang. So all Stang has to do is really get out of his car and walk up. Yeah. So as I'm paying attention to him coming across, I'm not paying attention behind me because my own partners aren't going to run me over. Of course not. And you're focused on the bad Correct. guy because he's the dangerous one. So I become a speed bump as Dave drives past me, over me. And I, so I'm laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh I, I'm laying on the ground. I remember the doors open on the passenger side. I just remember Jake mm-hmm. Diano getting out and just hitting, the, tackling the dude into the wall. Stang comes immediately right to me. And just mm-hmm. picks me up and puts is, is me on the Is this a tailgate. damsel in distress <laughs> position? Yeah, pretty much. Up, yeah. And I'm like, bro, oh, what the hell? You know, and, oh, I'm sorry, you know, this and that. But now his story is. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's, everything's fine. Well, when gonna... you apologize, though, you're admitting culpability. Correct. So, mm-hmm. so but mm-hmm. his story is I'm like that deer in the side of the road, and I'm just chugging along, and I hit the freaking You ran into him. Side you ran, oh, I see yeah. what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, no, man, that's not how this works, because I, No. <laughs> So that's, yes, that was one of my first. That's hilarious to hear. It wasn't hilarious at the time, but yeah, enough time has well, passed. A, co- a tragedy plus time equals comedy. So. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. I mean, I I take that when it comes to that. I it is what it is. I mean, it's a good story, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I walked it off. I pay for that now. Yeah. Before I would then, yeah. Before then, though, we were on a buy bust, and I was on point. And so I'm basically on point, pointing into the windshield, telling the guy to get his hands up, mm-hmm. and he's just not listening to me for some reason. I know better. I just punched the windshield. Mm. And I broke, I think that was the boxer's fracture. I broke this one, which I can't even bring it in now. It did, sticks out. Did it ever occur to you that you also had a palm of your hand to make noise with? Listen, I wasn't really thinking at the time. There's a mm-hmm. lot going on. Ta- ta- tactical, tactical, tactical genius. genius. Well, that's I think, when it I think we figured out the name of this episode. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was tactical stupidity. With a question mark. Um, but that wasn't the very bang. beginning. That was maybe a yes. year. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. A year into the position. I didn't know any better. You learn from your mistakes, though. Yeah. The, right. The third time. I Wait, well, I was going to say, I think there have been more than one instance yeah. where you punched things and broke your hand. So uh, I don't know what I punched the, the second time on this one. I don't know what I was. A, I punched. a person or a third? Well, no, that's object. the third. Okay. Wow. The so third one. Object, second one. We were in Vowu. 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 <laughs> and the guy, was wanted, the guy was wanted for murder, I think, out of Tennessee. He mm-hmm. had beat his wife to death. Oh. We ended up finding him. And we come in to take him down, and he gets, jumps out of the car with a can of spray paint and just huffs it real quick. And Ooh, he goes, kill that me. kills brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> kill me. Yeah, so he, then he takes off running, and so we all start chasing him. We tase him. He's on the ground, and all I have, and he's just laying on his hands. He won't give him yeah. up. So I just right in his head, just try to let Loosen him go. Up, yeah. He loosened up, but so I down on that one, I broke everything. I split my mm-hmm. bone all the way up here, so I had to get a rod put in. and Damn. So the- I can't even straighten that one now. <sighs> These days, they have these things called elbows that you can throw at people? Everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Why would you throw a perfectly good elbow when you have a hand? And that's yeah. what Stang even said. I mean, I don't know. I was just... In the moment. I'm in the mm-hmm. moment. Yeah, right. Yeah. You just do it. I won't do it no more, but I don't think... Because <laughs> you can't well, make you a can't, fist yeah. anymore. They're out of metal. <laughs> yeah. <I'm done>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> But it sucks. Like now, it's, it sucks as the weather changes. Uh-huh. You get older. It all. Oh, hurts. you're one of those old guys. Yeah. Uh, you're a gentleman, not old. You know, I'm a, me, I'm 
no, people I'm a, I'm who, could, who could tell the weather is coming. The, the <laughs> dumbest one is my, I tore the bicep. We were at oh. SWAT week uh-huh. and there was a, there was a big wall out there that we had to get put away and nobody was around to help me. So I, all I had to do was dump it, tip it over. And then, so I got, no, I lift it up mm-hmm. so I can get on the back of this golf cart. So I go to lift it up and I went pop. And actually, Justin Gould came over and he goes, "Hey, you want some help with that?" I said, "No, I'm a grown ass man. I got it." <laughs> so this oh. was this was an ego injury. Hundred percent. It yeah. was stupid. So I go to lift it and it pop. I'm like, "Oh no!" So I kind of walk away and I come back and I and I get it up. So then one of the medics is there and he looks at it. My biceps here and it's up here. And he's like, "You need to go to the hospital." I said, "I ain't going to the hospital. Not happening." So <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So we go in and, and he goes to the, the supervisor. He's like, listen, he needs to go to the hospital. I said, I'm telling you, I'm not going to the hospital. He, and so he orders me to go to the hospital. And he actually had one of the other guys follow me there. To <laughs> make sure that I went. Sure. <laughs> and it was awesome because the, the, the doctor there was, he made it out to be like just some simple strain. And I'm like, perfect. Can I get full duty? He says, uh-huh. no, you need to go see an orthopedic. I'm like, come on, man. Uh-huh. You said it's something simple. Uh-huh. I knew, everybody knew it was torn. I mean, hell, yeah. it's a knot here and a knot here. and br- yeah. Brutal. So I had to have surgery on that and mm. more metal there. Well, good thing you went though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I got, I guess, a pretty high tolerance for the pain when it comes to it, but <sighs> all right. Dumb. So back to Vo Woo. Vo Woo. Um, Vo Woo. Any, there's got to be a lot of satisfaction going and getting kind of yes. these worst of the worst yeah. and, 100%. And, and kind of bringing them in, uh, getting justice for people and, and so they can, you know, face the consequences. Um, do you ever. And this is not just to Vogue, but I guess it, do you ever feel bad for the people that you that you arrest uh, over the years? So yes, actually, I don't remember her name, but one of the girls I did a deal with, she sold me four pills. Mm-hmm. And back then, trafficking was huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did, sold me four pills two times, and it was just her own prescription, just trying to make some money. She had never even had a traffic t- ticket, oh. and back there, the minimum mandatory was three years for trafficking. She did three mm-hmm. years for eight pills total. Oh boy. So I felt bad in a sense, mm-hmm. right. but at the same time you're selling drugs. So there's a kind of a, right. Yeah. One of those, eh, you did it to yourself, mm-hmm. but between like doing what I have done, it's, it's violent crimes. It's narcotics. You're killing people. She's you're a not, thief. She's not. Yeah. yeah thieves, whole different level. whatever you steal people's whole different crap. Intent. Yeah. Yeah. So for the most part, no, I mean, not really, but you, you do arrest the ones that they said that that wasn't me. It wasn't me. You're like, all right, maybe it wasn't. It's not my case, but maybe you are getting arrested for mm-hmm. the wrong crime. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you feel bad, but it's know. for the judge or, to sort out. Yeah. Absolutely or, or not my be, problem. Might be a good guy who's like nice to puppies and kittens, but yeah. you're still selling drugs. Right. If yeah. I slept well, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. Right. If you <laughs> but you don't well. sleep. Yeah. So. Yeah, no. Because of all your broken bones. Yes. Yeah, all the aches and Just pains. Constant aches. Yeah. Just a pile of bones on yeah. the bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what, a- what happens after Vowu? Then we basically switched over to the tactical investigative section. So tis. 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 Nothing really changed as far as what we did in a sense. We still were the warrants guys. Um, we also merged though with the Violent Crimes Task Force, so we became a bigger um, section. Mm-hmm. And oh, I just want so in Tiz, you're you're not you're not undercover anymore. You're we still, were never undercover. Yeah, no, but not, or woes. It was it's considered woe, plain clothes. Yeah, so but you we have got, unmarked cars. We have unmarked cars, but we don't have full whites. We can, have beards. We can wear what we want. Yeah. Beards. beards, but we always wore the vest. Yeah. So we once we got out of the so car, sure. they knew who you, you were. Knew. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, after uh, so Tiz, you do that for a couple of years. Any yep. anything big there? Any notable stories, folks? You brought down. Oh God, we brought down a lot. A lot mm-hmm. of murders. Um, Notable off the top of my head, I don't know. Because when did you come out of there? Because you were back this year when I got promoted. February. Okay, I couldn't remember where you were when you got promoted. I didn't yeah. know if you were okay. It was this Tiz year. Isn't, Tiz is new. Like it's like 2020, 2021. Yep, yep 21. I think it was. Yeah. When, when, when I started, Bo merged. was still here. And, yep. Mm-hmm. I remember it was a good um, unit. So much fun. I remember uh, the night that Deputy Hartwick was killed. Um, we were all standing out in the middle of two seventy five, and yep. then just seeing an absolute motorcade of cars hauling ass oh, yeah. over to Tampa because we thought we knew uh, where he was. Where he was. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm like, oh, there goes Tiz. Yep. Always Work. doing that kind of stuff. And there's, there's got to be something that is obviously super meaningful in that in that situation. Oh, yeah. But just knowing that you guys are the you guys are kind of the last uh, the last call. We're going to go. We're going to get these people and pretty much and get down to business. And it's hard. It's it's one of those where you like everybody else that's out there doing it. You got to 
time out from what it is mm -hmm. and deal with the job. And then we you have time to mourn afterwards. And deal with but, whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's hard to – I remember sitting there going, because I've known Bill a long time, and I'm like, this, this sucks, but – just shut up and mm -hmm. go to work, find the bad guy, get the joy of that. Right. And then we'll deal with the rest. Yeah. yeah. That was, uh, that was just surreal. Cause of oh, course yeah. y'all guys are also not driving normal looking cars, but no. they'll have lights. So yep. it's like, Oh, mm -hmm. everybody's on their way to soccer practice. Yep. It's going to get real. It is. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so good. Much fun. Yeah. I mean, that's good stuff. And, and I've been out and about before with patrol and different things. And it's like, Oh, Tiz is doing this or that. And yeah. it's really, um, it's kind of a, it, it's a, to me, always, my perception was it's kind of an old school mentality about it's just as far as boots on the ground, knocking yep. on doors, um, sometimes kicking doors, but it going is. in there and just getting folks. And it is. And, and uh, we've always said that. Don't ever forget this. You can go shake the trees, as we call it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, it's not all about the computers. Just go. At some point, a family member is going to get pissed off that you're knocking on their door and bothering them looking for their son. Right. And they're going to just, so just go out. shake the trees. Just right. go old school and figure it out. Right. But that unit is the best. And a lot of those guys are SWAT guys. Yeah. I think there's only two and it, it, it is. Uh, you're talking about, you know, you mentioned computers, and it is kind of the, like I said, the old school, because it's nowadays you got to balance it. Obviously, use the tech, we have great technology yep. that we can use Absolutely. to our advantage. But also, like you said, I mean, you just got to go shake the trees. So I you thought do. that was really cool about Tiz, and they're still out there uh, yep. doing great work. The way they drive is beautiful. I've, I've ridden with Tiz, and, and just the way they follow a car, I don't know if you could talk about that much, but uh, I'd like <laughs> to see it from the air because it's it's like a dance. It's, it is. So it, it, it's, it is choreographed in a yeah. sense. You know, you just got to make sure you have all the directions, but in paralleling. And because mm -hmm. obviously, and you, you no don't want to be seen no so many, you know, too many times. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always asked and, and tried, I think St. Pete does it still, but I just wanted switches where I can turn a, a headlight out. Yes. You know, sometimes yeah. I'll have daylight lights on. Just to change the, the yeah, appearance. So if you mm -hmm. see, oh, there's, there's a car with it's that light out, and then you see the car yeah. again. That's both lights. It's obviously Correct. not the same car. Yeah. But you'd be surprised. Like, I had that Honda. It's like a light bluish gray color car, and everybody's mm -hmm. like, this thing's going to stand out. Well, once I had it, mm -hmm. I swear I saw them every three miles. Yeah. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's they get onto it, and they know. You'll know when they know you're there because mm -hmm. it just, it's a yeah. tactical surveillance at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, an aggressive surveillance at aggressive that point. Surveillance. <laughs> But well, then there's the eagle. So I think yeah, I think we absolutely. can talk about that stuff for yeah. that's a whole oh, other episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So SWAT. Uh, so you get the call because weren't you SWAT liaison at one point? I was in 2016 to 17. I was liaison. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a position that is within that. What do you call it? The SWAT office. What yep. do you? Yeah. I was the only full time SWAT member back then. And there's, okay. there's been other people. Obviously, I took over for Kenny Kubler. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the person's in charge of the the equipment training. Everything administratively at that point in time. So, so an important kind of designation is that, uh, and it's a common question we get, you know, with the public is whether or not our SWAT team is a full time unit. So no. it, it's not. They are not. Um, mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where you could have any. It's not a full time gig except for the liaison, the liaison and the sergeant. And the sergeant yes. So everybody else that's a member of the team is they have some other job yep. somewhere else, um, and they're they're called out, yes. um, much like the dive team and a couple of the other specialty units that we have. So. Yep. Um, you get the call from the sheriff. I did. You, unlike Freddie, hopefully you answered the call. Immediately. I did. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was warned. It was early in the. <laughs> it was early in the morning too, because I remember I was working. I think we had the initiative that night. One of the very first initiatives mm -hmm. that we just did last Friday. Mm -hmm. So I stayed up super late that night, wanting to sleep in majority of the day, so I can get ready for that. So I think I was called maybe 15 minutes prior to saying, "Hey, just keep your phone on. He's going to be calling." Mm -hmm. And then he he called. Called and said, "Hey, you're going to be SWAT sergeant." And he basically said, you know, I don't like promoting anybody who, who can't pass the test. I said, well. Hold on. I you, said, didn't, you didn't pass the sergeant's test? I did not. I did not. Well, hey, I tried. Okay. But I, I told go. him, I said, I, it's not my strength. He goes, yeah, mm -hmm. but, you know, you tried several times. I said, it's not my proudest moment either. But I guess, obviously, like I said, I've. You're this the, is you're a specific position. Yeah. You can't just put anybody in that yeah. position. Yeah, and I yeah. don't like talking about myself when it comes to that. But so many yeah. people did have my back on it when it came to. To, to go into this position. Yeah. So that's what I've heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I love the team. I love what they do. And am I good at it? Well, it'll, it'll be, be determined, I guess, but I should. I should I've heard good that. reviews so far. <laughs> <laughs> I, they're happy. I, yeah. I ask, the, I ask the team around. guys are, are, their morale is pretty good right now. Yeah. Yeah. They're hard to keep happy. So you, you got, so you got, you were having fun. You were out in Tiz yeah. doing exciting things. And all of a sudden, you have kind of a desk job. It was coming anyways for me. It's, yeah. Because I've been, you know, I got my 24th year last month, so it's time to slow down. 300 injuries. Can't make a yeah, fist. Yeah, so I, I was prepared. 
I mean, how many more do I got? I yeah. mean, seriously. Uh-huh. Well, you got two. Yeah, I mean, you've hit every leg. I do. That's it's so bad, and it just keeps getting worse. So, but I was prepared to go out anyways. I just mm-hmm. didn't know really where um, because it's time to slow You're down. Starting to look for, look to make the move. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'm going to retire soon, and I need to learn how to shut my phones off and yeah. just be able to wake up one day and not have to do anything. Yeah. So, and that's not the place to do it. However, <laughs> neither is what. <laughs> yeah. No. So when this time is up, where do I go? I don't know. But let's say somebody leaves SWAT or TIS, and I can go back there as a sergeant. Hey, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'll go back to the road and just chill. Madeira, like Madeira Beach. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> <You're burning. laughs> yeah, you no. don't want them to slow down that uh, much. No. So, so uh, what is the role of the? So there's two full time positions for yes. SWAT, as you said. So what is what does that look like for you? Actually, it's a lot of fun. So myself and, and Corporal Munoz is the SWAT liaison. Um, to be honest, we, we kind of work very well together. Mm-hmm. Um, Munoz is, was a huge help for me coming into this position because he, he, you know, my predecessor trained him very well to, to be very organized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So coming in, um, Munoz taught me the budgets and all this. I mean, I kind of knew it from the liaison, but I, I forgot a lot, but... Mm-hmm. So he has been a huge, but between the budgeting and the purchasing of things, just kind of making sure, you know, the medics, I'm in charge of the medics, um, all their overtime and stuff, but it's a lot of administrative stuff. It, mm-hmm. it, I'm fairly okay with administrative stuff. It, it was a shock for me because I'm going from adrenaline every single night right. to coming in going, all right, I got to sit down at my desk. So I bought stand up desks for us. Right, right. That Do you just I put had... like fake doors in there to kick down every once in a while? I wish. That's how he gets up every morning. Uh-huh. He just yeah. has a door, gets out of bed, kicks it. I jump into the GPV, I pretend like I'm driving a real, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. make car noises. Room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a shock, but it took me some time. I'm starting to really enjoy it a lot more. Like I'm, it's, it's becoming the norm now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I don't even know where to start with SWAT. So, mm. The way it's structured, um, so SWAT in a in a situation. I'm just trying to the best way to to kind of illustrate this. So in a SWAT call out situation, so the the way it, the SWAT unit is, who is the actual commander of SWAT? Uh, Captain Danzig. Okay, so Captain Danzig is the SWAT commander. So he's the one that makes the call, makes the decision to deploy SWAT. Yes. Okay. So then when and you obviously have out when you're out, whatever the situation is, you. There's probably a shift commander out there, you know, whatever. How does the hierarchy work when you're out on a call like that? So the shift commander is the one who's going to start that process. Okay. The good thing is, is Captain Danzig's the SWAT commander. Captain Jackson's the assistant SWAT commander. Okay. Mm-hmm. So no, they're going to, one of those two, whichever they're north or south, are going to get the phone call as to what they have. And then at that point, the captain, whichever one it is, will call the next, the major. It'll go all the way to the sheriff before that call is mm-hmm. brought out. A lot of times, so having the guys like Tiz, though, they can come do what a lot of the SWAT team would do. They would just, like, depending on the scenario, mm-hmm. let's say the guy barricaded and there wants to kill, you know, kill himself. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to call a SWAT team out for that, right? Mm-hmm. So, Suicide isn't a crime. Correct. So, so just call the TIS guys out there. They can kind of do their surveillance, get the mental health unit involved, and, and take them down whenever it's safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you have a guy barricaded with a gun and he's firing off rounds, it's different. that's going to be yeah. different. Story. That's going to be the call out. Um, so the sheriff will give the final, yes, let's go. Captain Danzig will make the phone call. We'll put it all out to the entire team that's on call, mm-hmm. and then everybody we'll just responds. Yeah, to we the, just go. So when you're when you're um, out there on yep. the call, usually they got the command bus out there, whatever. You have the coolest vehicle in the. AMC, I do. By oh the way, my in gosh, my you do. I do. Everybody um, recognizes that vehicle. Yes, yeah. I mean it's just just really pretty suburban, but it's it, pretty much my it, own luxury it, vehicle. It looks like a normal suburban on the outside, but it is not a normal no. suburban. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can run things from it, actually. Yes. You've got command screen stuff in the back, yep. but oftentimes the command bus will be out, you know, whatever. I'm parked so, right next to it. So, yeah, so everybody's <laughs> out there kind of doing their thing. Yep. What is your role in that situation? Because obviously, you know, if, if Captain Danzig or Captain Jackson are out there, they're kind of yeah, calling the, so the shots. Yeah, so we kind of all just will stand around together at mm-hmm. the back of my command center, um, and I have the cameras up, I have drones up, things of that nature, just mm-hmm. trying to see the see what's going on. The team leaders out there are going to be the ones basically setting things up and figure out what they want to do. Mm-hmm. The final decisions comes to us and obviously to the sheriff. So we'll come up with most of the time three different plans, right? Mm-hmm. We want to gas them. Do we want to use the negotiators and call them out and do of that nature? So we give them three options. Give the, then, sheriff, the sheriff three yeah, options? Yeah, give, give everybody yeah. three options, and then they kind of say, all right, let's start with this. Um, and then it's just playing the puzzle pieces, I guess. You know, you try one, if it doesn't work, then try the next. Mm-hmm. You know, having so much armored vehicles. So the sheriff does not really like the gas that much. 
And Why unfortunately, every time we've been out on a call out and we've used it, it never works when he's around. Yeah. But I can be in <laughs> Tiz and we de, you know, deploy gas and the guy comes out every time. So that sucks, but you know, it's just one time to work. Right. When he's <laughs> so there, he'll, so. even, he'll even say, well, again, he doesn't really like the gas, but so we, that's one of the options, right? That we can either yeah. gas him out or obviously we have the Rook, we have the GBV and mm-hmm. things of that. We can, just, we can just knock down the door and then say, wow. hey, come on out. I mean, there's lots <laughs> Cause there's, of- Because there's no wall or house left. No, well, that's, 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 the, last, that's <laughs> okay. the last thing okay. we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of – there's, of course, a lot of misconceptions out there about SWAT. Mm-hmm. And, of course, SWAT teams are different all over the, right. the country depending on the jurisdiction. And But I, I feel like – I've always felt like the, the goal, and, and we've talked about it with some other members that have, have been on SWAT, is you're really trying to bring everything to a peaceful, safe Correct. conclusion. Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. ideally, if you have to make the call – I know in the past you've had people that, that they see the GPV come rolling up yep. in their front yard, and they're like, yep, you know what? We're good. Done. Um, yep, it's been nice. Yep. Uh, have a nice night. And, and that's ideal. Right. Uh, but you're, you're still – you know, you're not in these situations where it's it's not like you might be portrayed on television, I know, which is hard right. to believe they tend to make things up, but you're not kicking doors in, kicking and blasting. No. Now, sometimes you have to, depending Correct. on yeah. the circumstances. Not you always know. the go-to thing, though. No, it's, not right. that's, that's really kind of last. The first if it's option. a hostage rescue, yeah, we're going. Yeah, yeah. 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 I but mean, if it's, it's the just a barricaded subject, there's no reason. Yeah, yeah. No I mean, reason. SWAT is already, done. and we don't do search warrants that way, obviously. Nope. And SWAT's kind of the last call, and then, you yep. know, going, uh, what, what would be the terminology you would use for that? Going dynamic? That sounds cool. Dynamic, yeah. Yeah. So going <laughs> dynamic um, is really the last call of the last Correct. call. I mean, you're not you're trying to avoid that at all costs. Right. And nowadays, with all the technology we have, there really is no reason. It's 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 hard to get it across to guys who put in so much work mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to understand that. And I get it because I was one of those guys. But now that you're kind of in charge, you realize that their safety is the highest right. You know thing. Part of those. It, it feels different when. Between you putting your life on the line and right. sending Asking your guy. Because I, yeah. I want to be the one. I want to go in there as well. Yeah. Um, but you're not allowed to now? I'm not allowed to. Oh, that must hurt. Yeah. We have a moment of silence for that. When he's not thinking about how bad his hands everything, hurt. Everything hurts. just hurts. So. So, but so unfortunately for them, they don't get the enjoyment of you know seeing. At some point we're going in, right? Mm-hmm. Even when the robot goes in and we find that the house is empty, we still have to go in to make sure there's nobody else in there. Mm-hmm. But again, we can open doors many different ways. We mm-hmm. have drones, we have robots, all sorts of things that go in there before an actual human being has to go in there and put themselves in right. danger. So, right. so, so you and your career have made a lot of entries yourself, but maybe the guys on your team haven't made as many as you? So having so many years in narcotics, I, I don't want to talk about myself, but that's what we're here I've for. probably done more entries, and a couple other guys, like Sergeant Barrett and a few others have been narcotics years ago, have done more entries than probably the entire team combined wow which yeah. is a good thing yeah. i would, yeah. I would yeah, say yeah. only because that was a while ago you know Correct. Mm-hmm. tactics and stuff things, things have changed and it's just not necessary because no. we get it done right um so you, you you're touching on technology and equipment so mm-hmm. let's kind of break that down so obviously your your vehicle the command vehicle is is definitely a piece yes, of equipment it is. um we've got the gpv which is one of our larger uh, armored vehicles Stands that has, for general purpose vehicle not right. really exciting yeah name, not a, that's the brand real, really exciting yeah. vehicle though it's um, actually called the sergeant is that's it? the name of it that's okay. true mm-hmm. gpv sergeant i remember yeah. that um, so you've got that, and that's got kind of a ram on the front of yep. it that can be uh-huh. used for a variety doors, of things. Yeah. Windows, walls, um, and you do a lot of training with that. I know. So then you've got um, you've got the uh, the robots and, and things. So let's yes. let's just touch on that a little bit because people we do a lot of questions about our use of drones and, and things like that, and um, we do utilize them in those situations because yes. we're just trying to get eyes on whatever we can. Because again, it's something robots, drones, whatever. That's something that we can send in in lieu of a person, right? Which we like. Yep. Or a SWAT dog, which we don't have. <laughs> or a SWAT no. dog. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't get SWAT no dogs. SWAT dog. Nope. Wait, why? Because they, they send, they send them in to follow they a laser. They don't and have guns. The robot shot. dog? No, no, no. We want the robot dog. No, okay, yeah, other no. agencies have yes. canines yeah. specific for yeah, SWAT. No. They're and trained to run in first no. and get shot. No. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the robot dog. No, no, no. The robot dog is fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, the robot dog is cool. So, no, yeah, our drones, on every call out, they'll come out. They'll just kind of float above and give us that aerial look. The eagle is you know used a lot, too, but they're fairly loud. Gas is expensive, so we'll just keep setting drones up. They have night vision. You guys are clear. out there for a while usually. So yeah, we yeah. just keep changing batteries and sending them back up. See what's going on. Very helpful. But the, you may go into other stuff. The drones. Yeah, do yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the drones, every major accident investigation, they get called out and they do all the scans of the aerials of the, uh, the crash. Um, today they're up in Dunedin at the, after the tornado, right. They oh, yeah. get a video of that. We helped the FWC after the last hurricane, mm-hmm. 
there were some manatees that were misplaced because of the flooding. Mm. Oh. So they went out and had to find the manatees, and then SeaWorld and everybody came out and you know, wow. they relocated the manatees. Misplaced where they needed to go. manatees. I love yes. that. Yeah. Um, they're videoing all the private schools. That way we have aerials. Oh, yeah. Of that. Mm-hmm. So right. Our drones are the most used on, on the SWAT team itself. Mm-hmm. Their hours oh. are getting quite a bit. Good. That, that's the most used asset yep. on, the, on SWAT? Wow. Yep. They yeah, use that so. technology instead yeah. of Absolutely. It's cheaper. Absolutely. Between that and then our medics, our medics are the most used after the... the oh, I do want to talk guys. about the medics. What's, yeah, what's, yeah, what's, what's their sure. role? The medics. Yeah. Our medics are amazing. And that's SWAT, kind of a, medics, that's yeah. a... That's a new thing-ish. Mm-hmm. A new-ish. Yes. Um, as far as being employees, we've had right. the medics right. since the beginning. Right. But yeah. as far as them being employed, and they're armored medics, so they carry guns as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, our medics, we have nine of them. I have three more openings. I would love to fill it. But they, are, they help out everywhere within this agency. They teach yes. a lot. They help out Mobile Field Force. Uh-huh. Um, they yeah, go I, on the I marine see them details. almost everywhere that you guys yeah, go. Any, any big training we have out there. Training. Training. Any yeah. big training. On the holiday weekends, they're out with the Marine unit. And every time they've been on the boats, it seems like there's been something. Somebody propped. Or, yeah. you know, oh, just, oh yeah, dangerous. it's crazy. So thank God they're there. <laughs> they're, Jeez. The marine you don't want to see that, Ashley. Oh, no, nope. it's, it's bad. <laughs> they're, they're actually asking for them even more. So. Our medics are phenomenal. Like yeah. if I get shot or I get hurt, I look. I hope to look up and, and see, see one, one of them. them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've I've have seen their tryouts and they mm-hmm. go through the same obstacle course Brutal. that your guys go through, and then they have to save somebody's life yes. immediately after. Immediately, immediately. immediately, immediately after. after. Yeah. That was insane. So that what was, do you, what do you find with the the folks that we do get to come in to be a medic? Be you know, may, some of them might be coming from you know paramedic other yep. paramedic Sunstar, roles Sunstar, Sunstar or anything, whatever yeah. like wh- what is the type of person that says you know what this whole paramedic thing is fun but let's do it while getting shot at like wh- what kind huh. of person says let's do that it's a different breed it's very similar to the SWAT guys mm-hmm. yeah. um, and, and I've asked several they don't do it for the pay they just love to do it and they want to yeah. be there to help but obviously they, 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 they do work a lot they do get a lot of attention out there and it's just better training for their everyday jobs mm-hmm. and I tell everybody on SWAT you know because we don't get used like we should but the training they get will help there every day mm-hmm. and save Absolutely. them or save somebody yeah. else. Right. Um, they may go get on a scene that's going crazy and they can just fix it right. and not yeah. put anybody in danger. You know? right. So the same with the medics. They, they get a lot of training, a lot of, a lot of support from us, mm-hmm. um, and then it takes them out to the Sunstar and, or FD. And right, whatever it just, is. Yeah, whatever it is, man. I love them. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. And people don't think about it either. And they have yeah, a right. pretty cool uh, vehicle as well. They do. Um, they have the, another Suburban. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another yeah. Suburban that you yeah. look at it and it looks like a normal Suburban. But you, yeah. can, you got a gurney in there. You can throw people yep. in and, and get, get, get business And we done. have Joey Greco, who's a team leader, who last yes. year at SWAT Roundup, he won number one in the world. On wow, the competition. wow. Yeah. Damn, SWAT wow. medic. Wait, SWAT medic. Did, did we know that? No. Probably did not. we publish? This Tell year I have three fans. of them going, so hopefully they're one, two, and three. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't think this is a, a quick and easy conversation, but if you can just summarize, like what are kind of the fundamentals of SWAT and the way you operate? Like what's the like what's SWAT one oh one? If you were if you're trying to explain to well, normal people. Mm-hmm. God, this is a tough one. Yeah, uh, like what 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 are the you know what's the basic elements? Is there a basic stack the way things work? Like I don't know, I don't know what I'm asking, but I don't know out. either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I'm lost over here. So well, there's, so I guess there's many so many variations parts, that you right. So because we have so many. Teams first, first, first of all, teams. what would you be called out for? What what is like a standard thing that you're called out for? Armed barricaded subjects. Okay, things of that nature. Armed and barricaded. Armed, armed and, barricaded. and barricaded. So they have to be in there and. And presenting armed. a threat to the public, or just in there armed? Yeah, and, but, but even the, even armed by themselves is uh-huh. kind of like, eh, are we going to come or not? Yeah. Um, but they have so either armed and then with somebody else who's a danger, or shooting out of the windows, it, or yes. making it's, it's, credible it's, threats. If there's good solid charges, mm-hmm. like that. Let's say we show up and they fire off rounds through the door. Yeah, we're coming. Okay, and we are not leaving yeah. until. Until it's done, because a lot of things up until that point, patrol can handle. Because patrol yes. gets a lot of training, then they're 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 Correct. trained. They ha- they can access the MRAP. They yep, absolutely. know how to set up on a house. And, and then there's again there's TIS. Yeah. And the good thing is, if I get all out of the twenty, let's say no, let's say thirty some odd SWAT members, whether TRT yeah. or operators, eighty Ta- percent are response team. are the, TIS yeah. or narcotics. So okay. our specialty units have are very SWAT heavy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's only a few still in patrol. Like CPO or DUI things of that nature, um, but they're out there. There's, there's. I mean, you just grab one squad of tiz and you got a SWAT team. Yeah, you know. So, but yeah, that question's tough. So the basic one hundred and one it would be like the movements, mm-hmm. the team movements, yeah. the building mm-hmm. clearing, right? Slicing mm-hmm. the pies, the entries, yeah. the two person, the mm-hmm. splits. Um, and I always kind of say it's like dancing in a sense. If you don't have, if you're not smooth with it, and you're like very, very rigid, you're gonna. Uh-huh. 
you're the bull in the china shop. Right. And you need to understand how your partner's moving too, right? Just like yes. dancing. So, I mean, how, so how, how many people are on a entry team or whatever? It depends on the size of the house. Okay. So I like an odd number. Cause so if you, if the theory is two to a room, right. And mm -hmm. you have an odd number. So there's always that one extra person. So if I have two, a room here, room here, room here, that one person in a linear hallway, that one person will cover down while everybody else is in the rooms. Mm -hmm. Wow. But I'd say eight to twelve on a basic house, mm -hmm. and then the extra nine to thirteen people. if you want odd. Nine, well, nine to thirteen, <laughs> but it's normally and it, <laughs> you're that, just contradicting yourself. I have no, to call you on but it. But that eighth person normally just is that rescue element. Okay, they kind okay. of stand when they when, but by the time they get in the breachers. By uh -huh. the time they get in, everything's done. Oh, so okay. there's just that the even gotcha. number to go support the handcuff and things of that nature. Okay. Mm. But as far as the building clearing, an odd number. Ah. Mm. So, and then the different types of, of entry. I mean, because there are some places, some buildings, whatever, you're just going in and there's really not much to it, right? Yeah. You know, you go in through a window, whatever it is, there's no, nothing's blowing up or anything like on TV. <laughs> right. Um, but then, you know, you guys stack up outside to go in. What is what is the method to the madness there with the order? And, and what are the different positions? What are their roles? Well, just number one keep was, it basic. is always going to be the shield. Okay. Um, the three and four, normally they're the breachers like the ram and the halligan tool, mm -hmm. a team leader be in the middle and a team leader be on the end. Mm -hmm. But in between, it doesn't really matter. matter. They're all yeah. just entry guys at that point. And, and what kind in of... Addition, in addition to the, the ram and the halligan, there's other ways of opening a door. What are, what are some of the other ways to get it open? We have explosive breaching. Um, that sounds exciting. It's, Tell me about that. It's so much fun. Yeah? It's just Talk about it's that. fun just to... Um, number one, you're blowing shit up. <laughs> yes. Right. Number two, <laughs> that loud, that concussion that you're feeling. I mean, you feel it internally. It's just... Uh -huh. It's cool as hell. And it's got to be intimidating for the people inside when they... Oh, I couldn't imagine that. what that's like. Yeah. I've been on the outside. I went to... The, we, I was part of the very first time we, we started this, the uh -huh. first team, and it was... I'm sorry. I'm coming out of the house. If you blow my door off, yes. I feel that and I hear that. That's yeah. it. Can I come watch you guys blow something up at your next training? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. It's always the last Monday of every month. All right. I'm there. The thing y'all can use to blow a perfect square hole in a block wall. Yes. And you do it with water. Water. What? what? Yeah, it's, it's, Tell us about that. So I, I can't remember what the term is. We have to go all Bill Nye. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, so we, so we, 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 we have this plastic tubes that are a square, right? You uh -huh. fill it with water. Um, and that's the dampener, basically. Mm -hmm. And then all it's doing is pulling the wall. So you have push charges and you have pull charges. Yeah. Obviously, a, a push charge, you're going to push the wall in. Yeah. And then you basically you put the charges on the other side and then you pull the out. Uh -huh. So it all depends. If there's people on the inside, I don't want to push it in. I want to pull it out. Right. Um, but yeah, water. So we use fire hose also. And then you can use the water as well. The difference between the two, fire hose obviously just breaks into small little pieces. It becomes very dangerous. Yeah. Water, obviously, it's cleaner, not as dangerous. But then you have a slip issue if that's the case. Mm -hmm. But it seems like now we have two different training that we've been to, mm -hmm. water is going to be the way to go from here forward, I believe. I mean, and it's like a perfect square. Yeah. It's, it's cool. like that would be a hell of a way to just install windows. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. you don't, you want a window here? Then, uh -huh. got it. Done. Uh -huh. like, yeah. I, it's crazy. That one we did up in North County a bunch of years ago where everybody, they, they thought everybody F 18s called. were yeah. flying. Yeah. We had noise complaints. Yeah. That we was we heard, hell of a charge. we did hear about that. Yes. Yeah, because you all do you you do train on vacant houses or, yep. or houses are uh -huh. going to be demolished and yeah. entertaining for the neighborhoods. But you have yeah. to do it. I mean, we we have doors set up out there, but you need the real thing. You can only do so yeah. much, right? Yeah. And now you guys have uh, the breaching shotguns too, right? We do. Uh, or, well, or well, you have the breaching shotguns anyway. I do. I have well, all of my breachers. I have six breachers. They all yeah. have breaching shotguns as well. So they, and, and those uh, are cool because you could there, there's no like what is it blowback on the other side right you could someone could just be standing on the other side and yep they be, could plus be, be with safe. the angle that you're shooting into the door it mm -hmm. shoots it down but it's not as cool as explosives no, no. no. Nothing's what is explosive. nothing's gonna beat that what about no. just kicking the door in does two people ever do that well we like, we'll use a ram for that the kicks okay. the, yeah I mean the kicks would get tough if you have to hit it perfectly and it has to be a it when you have a broken foot. Yeah. yeah. Are, so are you, are you still okay? The, I'm at the <laughs> command bot, the yeah. command truck or whatever yeah. the hell I want. Tell the other guys to kick yeah. it in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can just do whatever they want. So what is uh, what kind of equipment is assigned to each SWAT, SWAT member that might be unique to? We talked about your ask a little bit earlier, but but what what are they? What is issued to a SWAT team member? Everybody is issued obviously a ballistic vest, ballistic mm -hmm. helmet, comms for listening and, and talking. Um, everybody is given a we carry. Sig Sauer 516, fully automatic rifles. Mm -hmm. um, they're already issued their patrol handgun. Uh, everybody's given a flashbang, some smoke. Um, now, these are the vests, the ballistic vests are a little 
stronger than what deputies are issued, yes. correct? Yes, they are rifle rated. They all have rifle rated plates. The rest of it is just regular. A typical vest, but you yeah. put the okay. plates in plates, for plates rifle in front. rated. Front, front and back or just front? Front and back, yes. Okay. And over the years, they've gotten a lot lighter. They're mm-hmm. still heavy. heavy right? You add all your magazines to it yeah. and all the other stuff. Everybody has a med pouch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they, they get heavy, especially after several hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They can suck and they stink. Oh, yeah. You can't really wash them. So you have an eight-hour train day in the summer. You put it in your trunk. Your trunk stinks. You get a train hour in July. It stinks. And then you actually have to wear it, and you're like, ugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Wow. So uh, notable stories from call-outs over oh, yeah. your SWAT career? Speaking of the GBV, this is why we got GBV. I was not on a SWAT back then. I was on narcotics, and I wrote a search warrant on a guy, and I think mm-hmm. he gets out in 2027. Not that I'm keeping track. <laughs> so... This We had done a search warrant on him a few years prior to, and I think SWAT did it, um, and everything went fine. So on this one, after the, that one, he learned how to basically barricade his house. Mm-hmm. So I do the search warrant. I get with SWAT. They're good to go. Now, we have 10 days to serve this warrant. On yeah. the 10th day, they finally said, all right, we're going to do it. Because uh-huh. you were watching so, and waiting to see if he would come out. Yeah, so we wanted to do safe as possible. Mm-hmm. So I remember I was on the side of the house doing my narc thing and the SWAT team comes up. Well, there was one camera I guess I did not know about. So they were doing a ruse. So they go up mm-hmm. uh, and they press the his intercom button. They say, hey, uh, pest control, we want to give you a free survey. He, get out of here. They said, no, no, they're really pushing them. No, no, it's free service. Just come to the door. Let's talk to you. Well, he sees him on the camera. Uh-huh. So at that point, I'm assuming he's inside just getting his gun ready. And I, I'll swear to this. It was a full auto AK-47. Oh. He just blasted through the window. Oh, wow. So they came up with the shot lock at the time. And boom, they shot two rounds and then just firing off. Oh, jeez. Now the shot lock being? The breaching shotguns. Yeah, yeah. That's the round called shot lock. But no one one was hit? No one was hit? No. Okay. No, but so his story was, oh, they were shooting at me. But Mm. no, that's not how that worked. So everybody backs out. And I look at the one guy who's on the shield, and he's just going, I've been hit. I've been hit. And I see blood coming out. But it was just frags from the door. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, hell. (sighs) So that ended up being a 26 and a half hour standoff <gasps> with that guy. All they did, they, in just, that sweaty vest. they gassed him, they gassed him, and he yeah. was not, it was him, his girlfriend, and his dad. They, were, they, were they hostages or were they? No, they didn't want to come out. They were good. Oh. They, were, they were loyal. So, but I remember we had our peacekeepers back then, and I have some news VHS tapes of our peacekeepers driving down the street. They'd pull up, they'd hail him, pop, 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 he would just fire back at them. They would drive away. So we got to that point to where after 12 hours, you need relief of your team. So we called yeah. up Hillsborough and Tampa. They both bought their tanks. So I had the video of ours coming down the road and their big ones coming down the road. Mm-hmm. So which is why we have the GPV mm-hmm. because yeah. we'll never call them again for something like that. So yeah. we buy our own. Um, ours are like little Tonka toys. But yeah, that ended up being a 26 and a half hour standoff. Wow. Um, I think he destroyed everything basically. He, he hid all the guns down in the walls. Okay. Uh-huh. So we go in there. We don't find that. We find one rifle, no drugs. I find some hydrocodone in his shoe. Wait, so, so you, you go in, you make entry? or he Yeah, comes? eventually when he's done. We had to let the house get you know air out because there was so yeah. much gas in there. So after that was done, we knew there was more guns. So I, mm-hmm. I listened to every jail phone call for days, and I was able to figure out that he hit him, hit him in there somewhere. So I write a second search warrant while he's in jail, and we go in there, and we just search everything. I remember sitting on the fire truck with the sergeant. He goes, well, what do you think? I said, just go back in the attic and look one more time. So we go into the attic and we're looking around and one of the guys says, just punch a hole in the wall down here. He punches a hole in the wall and there's a little gun sitting there. We're like, all right, take it down. So every wall came out of the house. Oh, wow. You could walk in the front door and right out the back, just walking through <laughs> the frame, basically the, the two by fours all the way through the kitchen and the backyard. How he, many guns did you find? You remember? I don't remember. Six, seven. Never wow. found the trigger. We found the AK-47, but never uh-huh. found the trigger that would made it full auto. Mm. Mm. The thing that he fired at you when you first initially, yeah, were at the door. Wow. But wow. Yeah, he got twenty-five years day to day. Okay, getting so out twenty-twenty-seven. He, yep. Okay. Yep. Can't wow. wait. I'll be here. So, what else was SWAT? Do you, do you see? You know, where do you see SWAT headed? I mean, it sounds oh, like yeah. you guys are. Sounds like because of kind of the, the structure and the way we have things set up here, anyway. You, you're kind of putting yourselves out of a job a little bit to the, to the extent that yeah. you're needed less, which we can, mm-hmm. it's probably part of a good rebuttal to Freddie. Um, but uh, you're, you're kind of phasing that out and that you just have these folks that are out there that are, that are great uh, tacticians. Is that the word? Yeah. Yeah. So that can do their thing. They don't maybe we'll 
kick Freddie and his boys out and take over in the jail too. There you go. <laughs> okay. There's always that. <laughs> like how, many, how, many, how many SWAT call outs do you get a year, more or less? Listen, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> That's just a number. So, so okay, let's talk about CRT guys. <laughs> and I love Freddie to death. He's, you know, ever since your podcast, I have seen him more. Like he's out front in my garage over there revving his old classic mm -hmm. car, which is a beautiful car. Mm -hmm. And I saw him calendar. the other day. I saw him yesterday. And I'm like, I haven't seen you in so long. Now here you are. Now you, yeah, Coincidence? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah I think so. Um, so when it comes to those call outs, and somebody else years ago mentioned, you know, get on a team that has real call outs, you know, a lot of call outs. Well, we don't control the environment out here like it is in the jail. Mm -hmm. So it, if you think about it, it's a lot harder for the sheriff and the bosses to make the decision. It's a little bit more dangerous. And, you know, I mean, sorry, yeah. a lot more dangerous. Yeah. You have a one guy in a, I don't know the size of their cells, but versus a big house with unknown, yeah. unknown guns. They generally don't have guns in the jail. Right. So the risk, the risk is a little bit greater out there for SWAT guys. But so the, the having more call outs, it's not going to happen. You just got, it mm -hmm. is what it is, but. And, and when they need doing. you, they really need you and they only need you. That's no a, there's to, there's, there's no one else team. that can do it. Well, not me. that's what I mean. I just have white teeth and a nice car. <laughs> What else do you need? I know, right? <laughs> you're, you're the figurehead. Yeah. You're the spokes model for SWAT. Trust me, if, if there was a way to, then the sheriff will say, it, I can't make a SWAT call out. And he's right. I mean, yeah. the, 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 every call dictates what they do. And yeah. most of the time, patrol handles it. And that's fine. It's good for them. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's chances of it, but it would suck to make that call, get everybody out there, turn around and go home. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, handles itself. But it's a tough decision. It's a tough to be on. Why? You got to think, why do you want to stay on SWAT? And my theory is, is because of your everyday job. Yeah. You know, the, the toys we get, we get a lot of toys. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, we, the camaraderie is pretty good. You know, the, it's good. We're there for each other. We're a big family. Mm -hmm. We fight. Mm -hmm. We're all meatheads, but <laughs> it's what it is. Makes yeah. it, that's part like, of it. Like, like, like real fighting, like take it to the mats, do some boxing. What, what do you, what do you guys do? Whatever they want. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Listen, however you eat it, so resolved at the end of the day. We've yeah. never had any real fist fights. Strong, I'm sure it's been close. Words. Yeah, there's been some strong words. Rap battles? No, no rap battles. Okay. <laughs> Not that I know of. Dance-offs? Yeah, dance maybe offs. some dance-offs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, rap sure. battles. <laughs> Flex-offs. Yeah. Not oh, that, that I would believe. Yeah, yeah no, I, step off. I, can't, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But so no, what, it's good. What's, what's, the, what's the future of SWAT then? I don't see it changing much. I yeah. think our, our technology is going to change. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're trying to get some indoor drones now for for to fly indoor. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But technology, it's man, it's scary yeah. in a sense, but it's it's necessary. It's just so damn expensive. Yeah. You think a little drone? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. We'll, but, see. well they, they have cameras in them. That's like oh, as it's good amazing. as a helicopter. So, yeah, absolutely, you know. and we can see everything from the command post. So yeah. that's that's what we want. So if we can, let's say, you know, somebody is suicidal and they ended up killing themselves, we don't have to, we can send a drone in, we can send a robot mm -hmm. in there. All right, yeah. he's Because otherwise you might have to sit on the house for yeah. 26 hours thinking Who that knows? they're, yeah, yeah still plotting something. And yeah. So mm. yeah. technology is where it's at. Yeah. All right. So let's fully address the, the Freddy situation. Yes. The there, challenge that was thrown there, down. There is, there was a challenge that was thrown down. Will you pick this up? I actually made it official on the sheriff's office Facebook. Yeah, list. I saw that. I, I saw did. that. There's no yeah. going back. So it's now. true. It's happening. It's happening. We like just got to Facebook. We got to yeah, figure I, out what it is. I, I have some ideas. I, I want to get with you and Freddie and talk about yeah, some we've, ideas we've for spoken about how you're going to prove. I'm all for it. Who's the best pound for pound? We, we, the best on, uh, <laughs> tactical genius. <laughs> we yeah. know. For pound. <laughs> we, listen, I love Freddie to death, but he's but. missing a few. <laughs> we know <laughs> pound for pound who the best oh. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to prove it. I think we're going to prove it. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. Freddie. Freddie's good. Yeah, maybe, no, maybe Freddy, put some, some, some money on the line for a That's charity. That's why y'all put him in front of me because this Freddie Hayes. I mean, yeah. He's he, such a good dude. He is. I yeah, love is. working with him in training. Yeah. He's just. So do you, do you, work, you and CRT work together sometimes? We haven't. So I, I helped teach one of their When I was in training, I actually was part of teaching one of their schools. Uh -huh. Um, Freddie came to SWAT school. I, yeah, he mentioned that, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He did. Yep. Yeah, he did. How, how about oh. from your perspective? How was... It hurt me, actually. Probably yeah. more than it hurt him, because I love Freddie so much. Mm -hmm. To see him get hurt and to actually have to lead the team, because it mm -hmm. wasn't his decision. That was a medical decision. Oh, but yeah. It hurt, because I, I wanted him to be successful. I wanted him to see what we do. Yeah. 
Um, as far as working together, though, I will work with them any day. I would love to have better training together, build that camaraderie, because at the end of the yeah. day, we do have one one goal at the end of the day. Right. But they just work at the jail. We work out here. I would give anything, man. But that's anybody. I'll help anybody. Anybody mm-hmm. needs help out here, I'll help them. Mm-hmm. But Freddie Hayes, I'd do anything for that guy. Good dude. We, we were hyping. Like, we were supposed to be fighting, with, but yeah. you guys oh, are like, "Oh, we love yeah. each other." When we get on the field, no. that's a different story. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, we'll figure <laughs> yeah. it out. Who, who's, who's your money on, Ricky? Oh, I don't Slaughter know. Slaughter CRT. I couldn't, I couldn't possibly. I, I, mm-hmm. I have I have some thoughts, but I'm not going to share I, them I, now. I, I couldn't possibly. I think I think that uh, we have to see what the challenges are because yeah. we, we, we got to see what the challenges might be, are. You know, some I, things that you if, expect. If you were to ask me, if you ask me, which one would would try some some shady things? It's going to be so. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about. Let's talk about his stipulations, right? He says, "Oh, we can do some shooting things of that, right?" So, what does SWAT stand for? Special weapons and tactics. He says we can't use our red dots, all this other shit. Well, why not? I mean, we're special weapons, mm-hmm. so don't challenge us to a gunfight. And then challenge, be like, oh, and then, oh you, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like going to a drag race with a, you know, a three-cylinder car versus a big V8. Right. You know, that's, come on. Yeah. That's, Run what you brung. Yeah. Run what mm-hmm. you brung. I like but that. But we have some good ideas. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about. Yeah. yeah stay, okay. Gonna stay get with you. That. We'll, gonna we'll get, figure it out. That we'll, mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll, we'll make it for a great it's cause. It's going to be yeah. exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Showdown. 56 showdown. Everybody keeps asking me, is there going to be alcohol involved? I say yes. However, <laughs> I mean, if it's like a, a, a kickball, softball, something like that, absolutely. Depends yeah. on. Oh wow! And, and not not kick, not for the shooting, not on the range. Integrate dodgeball. kickball and shooting, or dodgeball and shooting. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Oh, what could go Do- wrong? Dodge um, a ball. Can dodging. you dodge a bullet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you can dodge a wrench. <laughs> that, that's it. That's it. <laughs> It'd be fun. Yeah. I think there's a way to yeah. to, to race. Oh yeah, money. yeah. There's. We'll make mm-hmm. it happen. Some really good things you guys could do. So besides laying in bed in pain, thinking about tactical things, what else do you mm-hmm. do for fun? <laughs> Golf. Anything? Golf, all right. You any, any good? good? Nope. <laughs> hey. uh, I'm okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't give up, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Just, Wait, is, what, what is your catchphrase or somebody else's catchphrase that you stole, fail until you don't? Is fail that until you, you don't, yeah. yeah that was, uh, mm-hmm. what's wow. guy's in, name? Inspirational. I know, right? Bobby Put Bones. It on a poster. Bobby Bones wrote a book. It's called Fail Till You Don't. And that's, so there was a time in training when, when they would shoot and they'd miss, mm-hmm. they'd go run. Well, that doesn't do any good. Fix it. Right. You owe me still for missing, right. but not right now. Just right. fix Figure it. Figure out so why you're missing. Keep yeah. failing until you fix it. Yeah. Shoot and the that, hostage when, when, right at the end. When I saw that cover, I don't read books, um, <laughs> but when I saw the cover up and I listened to him on the radio one day, I'm like, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, that's why I couldn't pass sergeant's test. I can't <laughs> study. I don't, I don't, I read, I read the damn thing, but it, it didn't retain <laughs> any stay, of it. Yeah. 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 You got practice. Audio stuff. books. But that's, yeah. you know, that's what I do now. Yeah. I think I get bored. You know, we should maybe get the sheriff. I'll ask him, actually. Uh, next episode, we'll ask him if, if we can record him reading the materials for Sergeant. Like test. the whole, all then the training material, be, yeah. the whole thing in his voice. Yeah, there's a recording out there. Like it's just not his voice, but that, that's inclusive. <laughs> 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 yeah, he'll just look oh. at me funny like he always does. But yeah, <laughs> so golf. That's it. Golf. Yeah, pretty much. Family time. Typical I just, stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't car. hang out a whole lot. I go home. I hang out with them. Yeah. How does your family feel about what you do? You tell them the stories. You tell them the scary stories. So sometimes, yeah. So my wife just naturally knows that I'm a window licker and mm-hmm. I'm probably going to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, her biggest fear is paper cuts and carpal tunnel. Someone in the agency wants to join SWAT. What what kind of person are you looking for? <laughs> Somebody that's not going to die. Okay. <laughs> on the trial. <laughs> so, on the trial. Oh, yeah, on the tryouts. Didn't didn't yeah. he like lose like four people just in the warm up? So some people just. They take it lightly. They just think, oh, it's just an obstacle course. It's mm-hmm. not going to be easy. It's psychological. It's physical. It's a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. The amount of stress you put on yourself alone is a lot. So I recommend anybody who wants to try, just come and talk to us and ask us more questions about what to expect. Yeah. Because you'll tell them. You'll let them run through the yeah. obstacle Correct. course beforehand. And if right? I, I'll, honest, I'll tell them, like, just come back next time. Now, yeah. just, I would rather you come back next time and do good versus come and fail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But however, we also like it. If you do come out and you fail, mm-hmm. you improve and come back. Mm-hmm. We're not going to hold it against you. Yeah, it's... It You're going to get razzed, is. though. You do. But yeah, that's part oh, of being that's what it, That's part of it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I remember on, on the one in April, I remember sitting there, the first guy ended up walking away. I'm like, all right, bye. <laughs> they go for their run. I get a phone call. All right, so-and-so's out. I'm like, <laughs> all right. We're going from 16. Now we're down to 14. We end up with eight. And I'm like, all right, where's everybody at? <laughs> It happens. It's not easy. Right. Mm-hmm. But I tell you, it's, it's harder to stay on. That one day, is, it sucks, but you have to, you know, continue to train. And yeah. it's a lot of heart, a lot of head. You have to be crazy. You have to be dumb. 
So you pay for your perfect no women? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Good one, Ashley. <laughs> I said, is that why there's no women? <laughs> no. Dude, Amanda I mean, Edinger. Yeah, she, she was. Yeah, 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 she killed I'm it. Just, I would yeah, love to have ass. her back. No, but there yeah. are women out there. I, we had nothing against that. Come yeah, on yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on out. Um, it's just, it's really physically. It is. It's mm-hmm. not easy. Physically tough. I mean, even like I've gone to SWAT and I've gone to canine tryouts. It's just, there's so much strength that's required. Why haven't you gone to upper CRT body yet? strength. Yeah. Hmm? Why haven't you gone to CRT yet? They're I, the best. I, well, I, I was thinking about that. I was like, I haven't been to a CRT tryout. I might need to uh, see don't it. Don't waste your time. To... <laughs> 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 but no, there's a lot uh, that's required here. Yes. That, yeah. you yes. know, it's a lot harder for women to, to build up. Right. Hmm. So. That is mental. Like I said, I'm not the best in shape. I just won't quit. You ain't gonna get me to quit. Mm-hmm. That's what it's out. Just if you, if you, not even with the good portion of your leg gone. No, you, you're gonna a better chance to put me in the ambulance against my will. But I'm, I'm gonna come back out full duty mm-hmm. with a desk that says, yeah. "Hey, I'm a desk cop." So <laughs> whatever. I think HR cares more about people now than they yeah. did 20 years ago. I don't they think they actually get away me, with that. When I came back and I gave them my full duty letter they said uh-huh. can you teach the new guys how to do that i said they can't handle what i have to say about this <laughs> these guys hurt their pinkies and they're out for like three months it just i, I but it's my imagine. trigger pinky yeah <laughs> so, okay so, so you're saying you're saying some of the new new folks out there just aren't what they used to be no kids so, these and, days and, and, I've, and i've been saying this because up and coming swat school over the past few years i've been the guy that i want to be everybody to be successful mm-hmm. and i'll do what i can i'll give you what i can to make you successful but this year swat school it's changed. I'm. Yeah. You want to quit? Quit. Just ring the bell. Get the hell out. Don't waste our time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, some of the some of the guys I'm concerned about. Uh, we'll see what we'll, we'll see how they do come uh-huh. Monday. Mm-hmm. But if I were to bet money, somebody maybe not from our agency is they're going home. Mm. Yeah. Once you're on spot, you don't have to requalify. Like you're on, you're on, right? You don't, you don't have, have to do the tryout process again. Yeah. But we do have a physical assessment yearly. Okay. That we all do. Mm. Mm. Even I do it. Harder yeah. than the PAT? That PAT? Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's harder. It's not, it's not all. Is it's it like the terrible. tryout or no? No. It's not no, to no, that I level? Not okay. That again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, no way. I'm stupid, but I ain't that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to? Ask them uh, when we got them. I, I can't think of anything. All right. So uh, we appreciate you coming on. Facing yes, our so fears. much. Um, it was a big fear. We do. We do. And it wasn't that bad. No. Well, no. All kinds of bad words. It's, it's just us. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're so easy. We, we always uh, we always kind of offer our guests an opportunity to share something they think the public should know or, or what, what can the public do to make your job easier? Other than like, don't barricade yourself in a house and then shoot no, out of it. No, barricade yourself. Call us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we want the work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is a tough one for me because I don't think about them like that. Yeah. Like, I want you to do stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it, there's, I mean, there's so much. It's so open-ended. Mm-hmm. That's the point. It's crazy uh-huh. these days out yeah. there. Just yeah. mm-hmm. be nice. I, it drives me nuts. That's Just a good one. It yeah. is. I mean... Everybody, I was thinking about this today. Traffic was backed up Mm -hmm. and people were just getting all sorts of irate. And I was thinking about how traffic, doing a traffic detail is the worst when you're, when you you have a major accident, somebody's over here dead, Mm -hmm. right? And people are irate. They are so impatient. They're pissed off because we just wasted 15 minutes of their life, but you have a dead person over there who's never going home. Mm -hmm. Just, you got to drive home anyways. What's 15 more minutes? Just chill the fuck out. Yeah. And enjoy yeah. I'm glad yourself. it ain't you. Yeah, mm-hmm. take a deep breath. Yeah. And just because traffic in this county is out of control. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. And I hate driving home. I hate driving here, but you know what? I just cruise along and mm-hmm. relax. It is what it is. Sh- it is what I it would is. too if I had that nice suburban. I just well, like, I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. I got Put the, the heated massaging seats, seats on, hell yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's get nice. But no, I wish just be nice. Just take a break and be nice. See, it's everybody else world. is like, lock your doors. But, but Brian's like, no, let's just be just nice know. to each other. Life Can't philosophy. We love, I love that. If I were on the road, I'd be like, yeah, lock your door. Because I don't want to do 21 burglaries. Right. Mm-hmm. But if everybody's just nicer and just relax a little bit, then everything's good. Everything's yeah. good. All right. Well, Unless it's initiative night, then we can go out and put people in jail. Well, yeah. That's always We fun. did well the last yeah, one. We, we I'm saying we just because I was riding out yeah. there. But yeah. <laughs> I well, observed you guys doing well. Well, yeah. Brian, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on Thank chatting so with much. us. Thank you so much. It wasn't as terrible yeah. as you thought. And, and there, will be yeah. more, uh, there will be more conversation about the SWAT versus CRT. Oh, yes. We have not, Stay not heard the end of more it. More to come. Brian. It's going to be fun. I um, appreciate you coming out. Yeah. Stay safe out there at your desk. Paper, um, paper cuts, paper cuts. No paper cuts, the carpet <laughs> tunnel. 
Take um, naps every once in a while. Yeah. So Brian D. Bold, everybody. So uh, Laura, do your thing. Oh, yeah. We would like to hear what you have to say, what you think about us. Um, praise, criticism, ideas for future guests. You can reach out to us at let's56 at pcsonet.com. That's L-E-T-S 5-6 at pcsonet.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.